What's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition to the Rated G Podcast. I am your host, G. Terrado. For those of you who are new here, welcome to the show. This is a podcast where I like to sit down and talk about uh, just about anything related to art and creativity, as well as other things in life. And I frequently feature other local artists to uh, sit down to get to know them better and to help uh, promote their brand. And uh, yeah, and we pretty much just uh, talk shop and just uh, talk about our personal interests and other things. So if you enjoy this type of content, please be sure to follow if you're listening, subscribe if you're watching. Ring that notification bell, that way you can keep up with the new uploads. And please share with your friends, leave comments for the algorithm. Um, And if you want to follow myself and my featured guest, you can find social media links, uh, links to our website in the uh, show description below. And uh, that's about it. And oh, how can I forget? Those who are returning here, my frequent uh, listeners and followers, uh, welcome back. And of course, thank you for your continued support. Uh, now, there's a, there's quite a bit to get into here before I bring on my, my special guest. <clears throat> um, a lot of stuff. Uh, first, uh, I just want to share that I, I checked out uh, Godzilla X-Kong, the, the new empire. Uh, I was invited by... My good buddy Noah Ray. Uh, it's been a. I've been hanging out with him lately, and uh, uh, he invited me to go see the movie, and uh, it was really fun. Uh, I'm actually glad I went out to see it. It's just a. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> I've been seeing how well it's been doing numbers wise, and uh, you know, just with you know woke Hollywood and all this nonsense, <clears throat> it's been. I guess it's just been refreshing for the general audience to just watch something fun and entertaining and, you know, just nothing having to be forced down our throats, uh, especially regarding, you know, like political uh, agendas, you know, stuff like that. So it was just, uh, yeah, you know, if you're if you just want to look for if you want to see a movie that's full of action um yeah, this is a, a guarantee, you know, like, I mean, how can you, you know, doubt a movie that's involving, you know, kaiju battles, you know, so this was really fun. Um, I mean, I, I, I can't, but part of me wished that I'd see, I'd rewatched some of the other, you know, the, the movies prior to this one, but um yeah, it was still a lot of fun. You know, it had its silly moments. And um, yeah, I don't know. Go check it out. If you're into Godzilla or Kong, uh, it's just a fun movie to watch without, uh, you know, any of the nonsense that's been going on today. Um, and uh, I mean, speaking of nonsense, I guess we'll get right into this one. <clears throat> so uh, I didn't really speak too much on this. On this movie, uh, just because of its uh, outrageous uh, premise, but uh, the the American Society of Magical Negroes, right? Um, apparently, it got pulled from theaters after I think it's only been out for a couple of weeks, and um, it's been doing so poorly that they had to pull it out. Uh, and according to so the uh, the comments, um, you know, it was it's worse than Madam Web and the Marvels. Uh, but I mean, I've I've kind of went on a tangent about this on one of the previous episodes, uh, <clears throat> regarding Hollywood and film. I mean, I guess this kind of seems to be the uh part of the running the uh, ongoing theme here, but uh basically i was just saying and um and i still believe in this now it's just like you know we as an audience we just want to watch good movies you know something that's entertaining um 
something that has a good story, you know, like, I mean, when you take all the politics out, <laughs> all this, you know, woke nonsense, the DEI, like, that shit is exhausting, man. And when you take that out, like, you get a good movie, you know, if you just get a nice, fresh story. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, the title, right, is... is the ma magical society of uh, I mean the the American Society of Magical Negroes like really who is going who who is like saying man I can't wait I can't wait to see this movie you know and uh what can what I can recall the the premise of it is these uh black magicians uh they they use their magic to make uh you know uh white people feel comfortable around them right i pre i think that's pretty much the gist of the movie and it's like what and it's like i can't like i don't know man like how desperate do you have to be to want to be part of this film i mean like i hate to you know be like ah oh, shame on you actor and actresses and writers and blah 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 but it's like for real like come on guys <laughs> be better no seriously though it's pretty pretty ridiculous and 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 such a shame because uh david allen greer who is he's known for um you know being one of the main cast members of in living color you know he, he's a funny he's a hilarious dude um i don't know if he's i don't know if he actually started as a stand up or not but i mean just when he's in movies he's funny like i i i'm i can only think of blank man that he starred in with damon wayne's but i thought he was really funny in that um i mean he was in jumanji the original jumanji but i mean like <laughs> what a like what a shame to like come back to you know to the big screen for a picture like this that has just done so horribly and um i mean i'm not gonna be like shame on you david allen greer but it's just like come on dude like i don't know if you could call this like a comeback role but it's just or whatever but it's just like you want to Again, you want to come back to the big screen for for a role for this movie? Like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> and also the 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 dude that uh, I don't know his name, but he was in, um, uh, what is it? The Detective Pikachu. He was in um one of the later Jurassic Park movies. Was it Jurassic World? Um. But, uh, yeah, like, man, <laughs> I don't know who else was in that movie, but just, gosh, I can only imagine how they feel um, seeing, you know, these these results. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, like, what do you expect? <laughs> and, uh, you know, not to keep circling around the, you know, the 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 theme of like dei and, and stuff like that but it's just like dude like when you hyper focus on these like i guess like the audiences that like care about this shit i don't even know man because i keep you know i see a, a lot of media journalists talking about these studios and you know these directors and producers and you know all these like showrunners like Kind of like turning on their on their audience is like, you know, like you didn't get it. You're you're not seeing the big picture here, and uh, <laughs> it's just like, I mean, I don't know, you know, like as a as an artist that I am, you know, I, I when I talk to other artists and we always talk about like, yeah, like it's not always favorable. It's not. It doesn't always benefit us when we just follow, you know the trend or what we think people want, right? Sometimes it doesn't it doesn't work out. Like we'll create art that we think people 
would want to see or would want to purchase. And then it doesn't turn out that way. But I would say in this case, you know, when you have, you know, uh, when you're, if you're talking about, you know, the cinematic universe, uh, Marvel, the MCU, uh, or Star Wars or Disney <laughs> overall, like you're going to want to listen to your audience, right? They they have a pretty good idea of what they want, okay? Uh, and we're going to get into to that uh, in a little bit. But, yeah, man, Magical Negroes, like, you know, not, you know, like not to make this a, just, you know, a, a race thing, but it's just like, I don't, yeah. That should, red flag. As soon as the, the title dropped, red flag, all right? But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> um I did see uh I, I actually th this morning I watched the the trailer for Joker um Bolia Bolia Dieu am I saying that right I should you know after taking 4 years of French in high school I should know better no um yeah I had um so before this trailer premiered, I, I, uh, not that I had doubts, but I was like, mm, I was just very curious about how this movie is going to turn out, especially when we're just hearing things from articles and, and, you know, the media, you know, um, like when they announced that this was going to be like a, kind of like a musical, I was like, eh. I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that necessarily. And you know, they uh casted Lady Gaga to play um what's her name? Drawing a blank. Um but um uh, oh boy, what is her name? Anyway, so yeah, when they casted her, right, to play the um the supporting actress of uh Joaquin Phoenix. I was like, all right, well, I get it. You know, if this is gonna be sort of like a musical or right, they're gonna um they're gonna want uh what's her face? I can't freaking remember her name right now. Oh my gosh. Um but uh yeah I can see why you know they want someone that could I guess dance and sing, you know. Um, hold on, I'm just gonna look up Lady Gaga as oh, <laughs> so dumb, Harley Quinn, derp, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I don't know, I was like, I don't know how I feel. Like, I'm hoping it's not gonna be like a full on like musical, like, uh, I don't know, like La La Land or you know, like whatever your, your typical musical film. But after watching this trailer, which was so far, I liked what I saw. Um, I could see how this could actually play out, how this could work. Because, you know, in, in the first one, um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix's character, you know, the Joker, he, you know, he will slip out of reality and he's like in his own world and. So, uh, I mean, he's got the famous dancing scene down the steps. So it's like, all right, I can, I can see that happening more often in this movie. And it kind of seems like that's where it's going, right? You know, they're going to be going in and out and seeing their world. Um, or we'll, we'll get a more inside look of what they're seeing, right? Uh, as opposed to what's actually happening in reality. So... Okay, like I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of in now. Like I I I'm intrigued, I'm interested. Uh did I watch the first Joker in theaters? I can't remember, but actually yes. <laughs> I take that. I do remember. It was fucking tense in in the theaters. Uh I plan I I'm, I plan on watching this in theaters as well. So, um 
yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited. Uh, I'm very curious to see how this this movie plays out, especially again, just judging by what they show you in the trailer, a lot of um intriguing cuts that they they shared. So, um yeah, it's, it's exciting. Um now I I want to uh bring up something that piqued my interest as well. Another thing, and this is kind of like this is kind of going into the AI discussion again, right? Um, because I saw, well, the thing that made me think, how, how should I even like preface this? So, you know, with AI technology now, uh, I don't know the technical terms that they're using, but, you know, they use AI, that you can use AI or they are, studios are going to be using AI to, to, um, to uh create you know the uh you know they're using it for like set design right like you got your blue screens right um so i guess to probably i'm only really speculating here um but it looks like they're going to use ai to create the you know like these environments the, the atmosphere so like you know, instead of having to travel across the world to get, you know, um, you know, uh, a, pati a certain environment, right? You know, like Lord of the Rings, if they made it today, um, you know, instead of like filming everything in New Zealand, they would probably use some blue screen and probably use AI to create the world around uh, the actors and actresses. So uh, it looks like they've been working on this technology to do just that, especially, you know, when you have like scenes where the camera is just overlooking everything and it's just kind of, you know, I mean, you can use drones too, but like this looks like this could be something that can, um, you know, sort of substitute having to use drones for all of these over overview shots and um you know i think that's i think it's cool i think it's neat i do believe it can save money if the movie does well all right because that's all right um <clears throat> so like i could see that being very useful to have um and I know there's like a whole thing with uh, what's his name that does all the Medea films. Like he's he he was talking about, you know, he was going to open these new studios, you know, for future films. But now with the use of AI, like he doesn't see the point of having these new studios built. Um, Can't remember his name. Man, I am fucking are worded with these names um but yeah uh so i think it's cool like that ai is is capable of, of doing something like that um and um but it brings me to this, this question here because i saw this interview with rebecca ferguson uh who plays um the mother in Dune. Um, I first saw, and she's in like the Mission Impossible <clears throat> films. I first saw her in The Greatest Showman when she played Jenny Lind. And uh, she's just such a gorgeous uh, person. Um, and, uh, and, you know, watching some of her interviews, like she seems just like a real down to earth uh, person as well. Um, so yeah, so like I've been seeing these uh interview clips on, on YouTube, and then one kind of like struck piqued my interest because she made something that was very uh profound. I want to find out from you, like, what's the most valuable benefit for you as a performer being able to shoot on location and to actually tangibly feel those places? I mean, can you imagine someone answering, Oh, god, I love me some blue screen, you know, when you have no depth <laughs> or feeling or heat. Or tactility. Is that even a word? I'm going to go with it. But that is it, isn't it? The fact is, the dimension, the depth, 
running away, running towards, grabbing, difficulty, sand. Sand is hard to walk in, guys. It's yeah, really yeah, tricky. Yeah. And the mountains and the rocks, I mean, come on, it's just, it puts you in a state of mind of realism within quotation marks. This makes me wonder now, having said all that, you know, having to listen or explain this, um, like, can using AI for set designs over locations, uh, you know, it, like, can that affect the actors and actresses' performances, like the quality of their performance? Because, I mean, she, you know, Rebecca points out, like, you know, when you're on the scene, right, when you're on location of where this movie is supposed to be set in, I mean, like, you, you know, you use the elements, you use the environment, to, you know, to to improve your acting, right? Um, and it just makes it much more convincing. Um, so I wonder if, you know, because, like, you can kind of sense that with films that are heavily used uh, blue screen. So I wonder if it's going to be even more evident uh, when if they start using AI. Um, but then again, like, I'm, I don't know the extent or you know the the extent of like how they want to use that ai technology for their sets but it just makes me wonder because it's you know i do believe like when you're like in when you're actually in the environment and the atmosphere like you can you know you can actually uh like manifest and and really perform well and convincingly um you know, whatever the context of the, the scene is. So it just, I, I wonder, you know, because again, I'm not trying to be, you know, in, or like, you know, during like last year, I would say I, I was very like fear mongering about the use of AI, but now I'm kind of like, you know, I try to stay in the middle and just be like, and just try to see both sides of it, you know, see the side that it can be helpful and beneficial as opposed to how, it can, you know, uh, enable society to digress, <laughs> right? And, and, and it all comes down to, I guess, our responsibilities uh, with the use of these uh, super powerful tools. Um, but yeah, it's just a question, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about since seeing that uh, interview clip but yeah if you're if you're tuning in i'd, I'd like to hear your opinion uh, especially you know if you're watching on youtube please leave a comment uh, i'd like to see your thoughts on the matter um and then uh the last thing i want to talk about because i just watched the episode this morning um and uh x-men 97 um now I, I I I try not to talk about this show too much, you know. Um so hopefully I won't bring it up again until I finish uh this this season. Um but man, I, I gotta say, especially because we're you know, episode five just came out, so Whenever, like, who knows what direction the show is gonna go when this episode actually come when this podcast comes out? But I will say, episode five, which is titled "Remember It," I'm gonna remember it. <laughs> this shit was bonkers, in a good way. Um, yeah, I gotta say, uh, I'm I'm really impressed with how this show has been going on. You know, I had some skepticism from hearing these uh, media journalists, uh, you know, especially like the wokeism and all that stuff, uh, especially in regards to Disney and Marvel, right? But uh, I got to say, despite everything that's been going on, I feel I do. Right now, I do believe that this show is doing justice. Um 
And I think the last time I spoke about X Men is that uh, I guess like I was kind of like saying how you know Disney is gonna they're they're kind of like relying or maybe like MCU like they're kind of relying on this show to be successful to just kind of make up for all of this uh, you know BS that's that's going on. But um, I gotta say because initially when. When they first announced that Disney bought Marvel, I was I was ecstatic because, you know, you know during their I mean, I don't know if the, you could call it their prime, but like you know, their prime in, in a sense of two uh, D animation. You know, Disney Disney had been crushing it, right? So when word came out that they bought Marvel, I was like, yes, awesome. Now, you know, the like these Marvel cartoons, like now they can actually be awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, they I, I'm not gonna say they're all terrible, but um, you know, like in regards to X-Men, because every time they would bring in a, a new, you know, a new series for X-Men, it was kind of like, eh. and like even aesthetically in terms of like character design and stuff, it was like. I don't know. I'm like, I haven't been, you know, like X-Men Evolution was, uh, I enjoyed that one, honestly, just despite all the, the changes that they made, you know, with the story and the storyline for the characters, all that, but it was still fun. Like I, I enjoyed the animation quality. Uh, the character design was, you know, still pretty cool, but then they like started like simplifying it. Right. Um, and then, like, they had the Wolverine and the X-Men, which was, like, I, I wasn't really thrilled with their character design, but me being such a Wolverine fan and a fan of the X-Men, of course, I'm, you know, I'm still going to be loyal and, and watch the cartoons. But, uh, so, yeah, when, when the news first came out that uh Marvel was being bought by Disney I was like yes now we're going to get some act like quality X-Men content and um you know it took a long time but there's a fly here uh it took a long time but here we are and uh, again despite you know the the recent news that was coming out before the premiere of X-Men 97 I got to say it kind of it's it's actually now living to my personal expectations because um i mean the tonality of the show is a certain is much more serious like feels more adult uh you know in like the like this is really starting to gear towards the the adults um <clears throat> especially that followed the the original x-men animated series I mean, they got all the cool Easter eggs that, you know, that series was known for. They had, they would always have these cool Easter eggs with the characters popping up and cameos and whatever. Um, but then, like, the, the music, man, the music has just been, like, so much better. Like, it, it, it really helped, again, the tonality of the show and, like, really build that suspense. Like, man, I'm like... It's been a while since I've gotten sort of this excited for for a cartoon like this, um, especially in regards to Marvel. So, um, I just yeah, I've been really happy with how it's been going, and so the music has been awesome. I've I've uh, I've praised I've I've preached about the the animation as well. Like the animation quality has been so so much better, um, and uh, dude, like the action. Right, because I've talked about how they sort of it seemed like they kind of boosted some of the characters' uh, powers, right? But man, the way they really showed uh, these, uh, you know, these X Men using their powers and these kind of like in these action sequences, like yes, I'm all for it, man. Like this shit was dope. <laughs> it was dope, um, and um. Yeah, I'm like, I'm finally getting the X Men I've been wanting to see, man. And uh, I'm not that I'm gonna like, I'm not gonna spoil anything in regards to this recent episode, episode five. But yo, this one is a doozy, and 
You know, like I said, it's been a while since I've been excited for any uh, uh, Marvel show. And um, yeah, this one's got me like on the edge of my seat and, you know, excited to see what's going to happen next. Like, man, it's, it's good. I, I, I'm re like, like, so if you're, if you're checking this out and you haven't seen X-Men 97, I, I would definitely recommend it. Especially if you like grew up watching the original cartoon, like definitely check this out. This, like this one was, uh, it's, it's dope. All right. And, um, I don't know. I'm sure there's some hardcore fans that will, you know, and hardcore critics that will find these things to pick at it, but I don't know. Like, man, you know, may I'll I'll go ahead and, and claim that I'm a casual fan. Uh, but uh I don't know, man. Like I I'm finding I've found more things to enjoy than to not enjoy. So I'll just leave it at that and and let you be the judge if if you um decide to check it out, but it's a doozy and i don't know what to expect for episode six so we'll see and um if it leaves me uh in the same state that it let this one left me in like i, I don't, i'm gonna try to keep my mouth shut and just wait till the end of the you know the the season and then i'll talk about it because i mean i don't know man it just it seems like each episode has been like, um, like every episode has been has been really entertaining and good and, um, I'm just sorry, I'm like my mind is like going like crazy right now. But like every episode has been really entertaining, and then when it comes to like the main story plot, I mean, it's like, whoa. <laughs> so uh yeah that's that's all i'm gonna say about that and um yeah i don't know if you check it out i hope you enjoy enjoy it as much as i have been um but yeah so uh before i bring in my guest uh, I'm, i want to plug in some uh richmond events uh so for my um local audience members tuning in if you want to come See me, say hello, uh, meet me in person, check out my work. You can catch me at the Creative Friends Market in Chesterfield on April 20th, 420. Uh, I will be there. Um, or you can find me at uh, on April 27th. I am going to be at the pop-up uh, pop up RVA market at the Diamond Stadium. And if not that one, I have, well, this one is out, out of Richmond, um, on May 25th and 26th, I'm going to be in Charlottesville for the Charlottesville Arts Festival at Ix Art Park. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, I will be, I haven't really been advertising it, but you know, I, I will most likely be doing or offering on-site commissions okay um just lately like i every time i put my sign out there for like no one seems to be interested but i would still like to leave it open for those you know shopping around that would like a custom piece um i will be offering them at the events i do offer you know regular commission work as well so if you're not able to see me uh, at these events because you have other plans or whatever. Um, I do have my shop uh, online. It, it's uh, it's updated. So everything I sell at these events are online. So you can shop there uh, at the, the art of G Toronto dot square dot site. And again, if um, you know, if you peruse through, through my work and there's, you know, there hasn't been anything, um, that really piqued your interest and you would like a more personal, more uh, customized piece. I do commissions throughout the year. And if it's your first time booking with me, you get an automatic 10% discount. Shipping and handling is included. I am open to payment arrangements. Okay. Especially if you're working with a tight budget, now, I'm always willing to, uh, you know, 
meet you in the middle. Okay. So, you know, just hit me up if you're interested. Uh, all of my links again will be provided in the show description. And um, yeah, that is it. Now let's get into my guest. Joining me for the first time uh, from Utah, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, yes. is uh, coincidentally another artist I met through the Creative Impact Academy, uh, or as I like to say, the, the CIA. Um, and she is also a, a fellow watercolor, so I'm I'm really excited to get into that. But uh, please welcome Rhiannon Doss. Doss, yes. Doss, yeah. <laughs> you did it. I, I I meant to confirm that before recording, but I forgot. <laughs> yes. So. Thank you, Rhiannon, for, for joining me on the podcast for your first you. podcast. Yeah, the first one. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I read because I so it's it's kind of funny. Like I just had Kristen Steindel uh, on last week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then even before her, um, I mean, a while ago, I had Lena Solga on as well. So. Um, like gradually featuring other artists <laughs> from the academy. Um, I think it's great. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been it's been fun. So I I guess like on the on that subject, uh, how how have you been, um, you know, experiencing the academy and whatnot? Um, so I left. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, I did. I bowed out a couple months ago. Um just because I felt like I was like absorbing everybody else's like personalities almost. Um, and like my, I didn't feel like my social media posts were as authentic as I was wanting them to be because I was like absorbing what other people were doing in the academy. So mm. I bowed out um, and then things just got crazy and I'm just kind of doing my own thing. So yeah. <laughs> interesting. I never, so to a certain extent, I actually kind of, I resonate with that in terms of um, not absorbing other, the other artists personalities, but, I mean, this might be kind of petty of me, but like, I, I like, you know, just I get to a point where when I'm seeing everybody's wins and and not even just wins, but like just I don't know if I just start seeing too much going on where it's starting to really preoccupy um, just like my my mind and like, oh, like if I'm just getting too preoccupied with other people's achievements or concerns or whatever um yeah i'm just like i need to shut out i need to like shut that out for a bit and i i've been sort of uh i've been actually pretty low key in that group uh to the point where uh was it lena so someone like called me out uh when they saw me pop up in one of the meetings just because i haven't been posting or sharing anything in the in the community but um yeah i mean the I kind of I resonate with that with having to like kind of pull pull out and I and I was uh I've, I've expressed this with uh, Kristen uh, on a couple of occasions but like once I actually finish this last lesson I do plan out I uh, plan on pulling out as well. Um, mm -hmm. I mean for me it's really just a financial thing. Yeah. Because like there have been several times i <laughs> i overdrafted because of those uh those monthly oh days. no <laughs> yeah well because like I, I you know um I, I i mainly make my money doing markets and occasionally doing some uh um private commissions mm -hmm. so there especially at least here in this community where pop-up markets and pop, you know artisan markets and all that it's such a regular thing, like it's oversaturated. That's how mm. um, constant it is. But um, you know, it does hit like this. Uh, you know, every like winter season is like the break time. Mm -hmm. but, like the first uh, 
so yeah like i'd say the first quarter of the year it's it's you know it's quiet you know not not a lot of us are active so for me you know just being inactive for the last few months i'm like yeah i'm hurting <laughs> you know, like yeah. you know, and i always like kind of joke around about m me my wife being you know the breadwinner um but i make the sandwiches i always have to <laughs> point that out but no but uh, her being like the breadwinner so like you know I don't know I, I always kind of like hit these moments of like financial uh depression where I'm not active out there like I'm creating art still I'm doing my thing mm -hmm. but it's just like when you start you know bills start racking up and other stuff like I don't I get to a point where it's like I don't want to have to rely on my wife to help me get out of the get out of the hole and overdraft fee or like when you know stuff like that happens but um yeah it's um the the academy though going back to that it's like it, it's certainly been helpful for me but um mm -hmm. it can be it can be pretty exhausting yeah like i love how um introspective everything is and how it, it's like digging at the why of your art um but as for me it was like shiny new objects distracting me from <laughs> from doing the work that needed to be done so I was like oh, yeah, let me take a break from this and see because like I really believe that everything that I need I have it's just a matter of executing on it so mm. I don't know <laughs> yeah um yeah I mean that and that's the thing too it's like it it, it does have me like I, I'm at this point where I do feel, you know, with the with the tools that Lennon has provided, like that is something I can carry on and continue to work on on my own. Yeah. Right? Like yeah, he gave us sure. the wings to be mm -hmm. able to fly. Right. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, like and, you know, with the you know, they, they've been talking about the brand intensive uh, mm -hmm. program and stuff, which. Sounds intriguing, but and it and it's it's kind of a bummer because like I part of me was like on the fence about it, and um, you know I signed up to be on the waiting list, and then I actually um, had the opportunity, but just again because of finances, I couldn't afford it even with like yeah. offers, and I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, you know, but I told him I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna finish what i'm doing here and um and just keep putting that into work and then see because i do believe like for yeah like going back to my personal experience like it's certain you know figuring out our why and stuff like that it, it really did help me out um dig deeper as to like why i make the art i make so i i'm sure that's the same with you to an mm -hmm. extent like you have a a firm, uh, a, a more firm understanding as to like, why do you enjoy the paint, uh, to paint the things you paint, um, which I, I, I enjoy your work because they're, <laughs> I kind of feel like, you know, with certain, uh, subject, uh, matters, like we, we kind of like, I don't want to say we do the same things, but like, I mean, you paint food, Similar. like I enjoy <laughs> painting food as well. And yeah, you know, just being, uh, you know, we're, both of us being uh watercolorists like majority of the artists that i talk to on the podcast are either acrylic or oil painters or just other uh types of crafts it's a uh, it's not often i have other water watercolorists on and it's just so funny like picking their brains about it because it's like people that paint with um uh, you know oils or acrylic they're very like standoffish with watercolors because of how uh unforgiving <laughs> it is and you can't control it <laughs> yeah which like hey i you know i agree with all of that but then part of me does enjoy that bit of chaos you know it's almost like yeah. a controlled chaos um and it can also like um sort of um ah uh, what what are the words I want to use here? I don't know. Just like sometimes when you let the water and the paint mix the way they mix, and especially when it hits the water, like you can't replicate those. I don't even want to say strokes, but just the way 
the paint settles in the paper, if that makes yes. any sense. You know? I have goosebumps right now because that's my favorite thing about it. It's some kind of magic that happens where if when you can let go and just let it do its thing. And even like there's times where I'll just like slop a bunch of stuff on there and walk away and come back in an hour. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is the coolest thing. So <laughs> it's like these cool surprises that it like you are facilitating, but it's like creating itself almost yeah because like you can i mean you're never gonna get the same outcome when you're let's say you're doing um now i i, I do want to clarify like you, you just judging by your work and seeing some of your videos you do seem more like uh more of a, a pure watercolors as opposed to me like i i don't you know i don't know maybe you might know the lingo better than me but you know when when watercolors uh talk about the like the water on water uh, water on water or wet on, wet on wet yeah wet on wet yeah yeah so again i'm i am a watercolorist but not like uh <laughs> you know <laughs> you're still an artist if you don't abide by the lingo it's okay yeah. thank you <laughs> I, I feel better about it <laughs> but yes wet on wet because i don't i don't i don't know i'm very selective about when i do apply that method to my paintings but so going back to like um you know the, the the results of when you're doing wet on wet um you never get the you're never going to get that same stroke even the same you know splatter or you know blotch or whatever it's always going to be something different and depending how much uh water is implied i mean you might get these streams right that turn into the beautiful strokes in your painting and it's just like mm -hmm. That's it. Like, I love the way that came out. I would never be able to replicate that, but yes, there it is. And uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's, I guess that's what we both enjoy about watercolors. Yes, for sure. And for me personally, I am very much a perfectionist in other aspects of my life. Mm. And so the watercolor is a good uh, lesson in just like letting things happen and not trying to control for every aspect. <laughs> that's uh, actually that's a great way to look at it because I myself, yeah, on on many aspects of my life, I am sort of a perfectionist. Um, you know, there, I, I mean, I to the best of my ability, I try to have some sort of structure, whether it's just like routinely, you know, daily, like day to day routines or like um technique in my art um there's always like this sense of structure uh even just like the methodology of it wait that's not a real word is it but anyway like even just like the way I execute there's like always like this has to happen and this and then then this but the watercolors it's like no once <laughs> once you mix the paint in the water and then you dip your brush onto the paper like that's it like mm -hmm. <laughs> be sure you might be able to fix it but it's like you're, you're you're working with water so it's just like you just gotta let it flow and that and that is like a contrast to just like our life I guess is like right you know, so we're so used to like having some sort of structure that the watercolor art allows us to be more free and more mm -hmm. free yeah, I agree. So before I was painting, um, before I had kids too, um, I used to make cakes as like a little side evening weekend business. And that was awful for me because I am such a perfectionist. <laughs> like the cakes were beautiful, but like with how much it was taking out of me mentally, I was like, like there was this one the SpongeBob cake lives in infamy in my mind because I was ready to back over this thing with my car by the time it was done. <laughs> Cause it was like, it was big and I was a little mad at myself for not charging enough for it. And then um, like, it came out beautiful and like to my standards, perfect. <laughs> but um, I, after that, I was like, I think I need to be done doing cakes. And then I had kids um, and having a grabby toddler on your hip is not super great for cakes. Yeah. 
you know, people don't want like a dip taken out of their frosting by your kids. So <laughs> let alone getting them hooked on sugar at such an early age, right? <laughs> right. Like, yeah. And right. yeah, it's just so the cakes were put to rest, but it's uh yeah. <laughs> so um that's a that's really interesting, like that that transition. So uh, I guess like what the the question I'm going to ask you is, which is what I ask all my guests, is like what what is like your your creative ba- or your art background, um, even like prior to the baking. Sure. Um, so I've always been a pretty creative person, like always even like as a kid, like sitting in front of the TV, I was always like sketching, painting. Um, I remember like my mom would go grocery shopping every Sunday and like every time she would always bring me back something new for like art supplies. So she encouraged that a lot. And um, as I got older, I got more into like pencil sketching and like pencil portraits. And then I graduated high school and I don't know what happened. I stopped doing art. (laughs) Um, And I like dabbled here and there a little bit as an adult. And then um, after I got married, uh, my husband is an incredible artist. And so I would always ask him to paint different artworks for our house. (laughs) Like he painted like a gigantic um, abstract piano piece that we hung above our couch and all kinds of stuff. Um, And then he started to do, he did, um, what was it? Something in watercolor. And I sat and watched him do that. And I was like, oh man, I got to try this. (laughs) So um, I started dabbling in that a little bit, um, but it was more of just like, you know, every now and again, And then the cake thing happened. I don't really know how (laughs) or why it happened. (laughs) It was just like something I happened to be good at. And um, like that kind of lets you, it has an artistic side to it. So, um, and that I just like picked up from like YouTube basically. And then same with once I decided I wanted to get serious with watercolor. Again, it was just like tutorials on YouTube just trying out different styles and stuff. Um, And then uh, my mom died um, seven years ago and I needed the outlet to let go of everything that I like was bottling up inside. And so, yeah, then I started taking uh, watercolor more seriously. I started doing pet portraits for people and it's just grown from there. Wow. Wow. So I know I'm like, I'm self-taught. I'm not like, I always envy the people that like went to art school and stuff, but I don't know. YouTube has served me well. <laughs> Honestly, like I've, I've told, especially like parents, um, when I'm talking to parents whose kid, who have kids that um, are like aspiring artists or, you know, just even mention about wanting to be an artist. Um. I always tell them, like, whether you get an education on it or not, like, if your intentions, your root intentions is to, like, I want to take this and I want to do this. Like, this is the thing I want to be doing for a great portion or for the rest of my life. But if the intention is to get better at it, like, you're going to, it doesn't matter whether you have, edu- you know, like a degree on it or not, you know, like yeah i've seen so many phenomenal artists that uh have openly claimed that like yeah i didn't go to school for art i went to you know i did architecture or like whatever the thing is like something unrelated to visual arts and you know but because they just had it in them to want to learn and to want to get better and they just stayed hyper focused on that that they became this you know, it could be a big name or just someone that's like really, really um, good at what they do. Um, yeah, I mean, so it does. I, I always like I would always tell them like, yeah, like, if, you know, if they want to go to school for that, great. If not, but they 
still have that intent to be as good as whoever they admire. Like, I mean, they'll get there too. You know, it's just like you gotta just right. you gotta put in your dues. You gotta put in that. Yeah. That's like yeah. I really like. That's just something I really grasp on because, like, I I didn't you know I didn't get a BF uh, BFA uh, in the arts. Like, I want I got a degree in media arts and animation, and I don't know. Mm-hmm. So it's, <laughs> I think it's just like as long as you just hone in on on the thing that you enjoy creating, like you're gonna you know you're certainly gonna get better at it, especially if you're open to. Um, even just learning different things, whether it's mm-hmm. other skill sets or just techniques, um, you know, whatever it is, whatever it means for for the individual to be a better artist. So, yeah. So when people are like, "Yeah, I have no educational background," and it's like, "Hey, that doesn't even <laughs> it doesn't matter these days," because like you, like, you know, like yourself, you learn from tu- uh, tutorials on YouTube, which like. There's there's certainly no shame in that. I mean, there's so much great content out there that can help you, you know, get to where you want to be. So, I mean, even when I look back, I'm like, damn, like, even though I do, I I do appreciate and still use the things that I've learned from, like, even my animation days, but I still look, I'm like, I, if I had known any better, I probably wouldn't more on the uh you know maybe on the fine art route so that i know more of the lingo <laughs> like stuff like that but um yeah i don't think yeah whether or not uh, however you, an artist learns their craft it, it that shouldn't matter i i agree and i appreciate that yeah, of course. <laughs> and I, it's oh go ahead uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say it's um it's like people will be like oh you're so talented and I'm like well thank you but I also spent a lot of time doing this mm. so I think people don't like think about like how much time artists actually spend like perfecting their craft and experimenting and trying new things and yes it's yeah. just like anything you know an instrument you know you're not gonna get better at it if you don't practice exactly um and that's the thing I've uh, I've had this discussion numerous times, but sometimes like, I mean, talent can only get you so far, you know. It's mm-hmm. a matter of the discipline, and that's why I, I emphasize on uh, intention too. Like, if that's like your intention is to be better, um, as long as you stay on that path, you're gonna get better. Um, and if you're talented, that's like you know that's that's a nice little, that's a nice perk right <laughs> um but like because like that's the thing like something i've always sort of lived with is like you know as a kid like i was i was i was the art you know the artistic one so everyone was oh go to g if you want a drawing done mm-hmm. um and i i i fell off of um art as well like during high school i started venturing out with music try well <laughs> I try to you know try to get a girlfriend <laughs> playing an instrument you know <laughs> to, to oh, no. teenager <laughs> shit really yes and, um because <laughs> um, like yeah i mean like when cause my wife she's my high school sweetheart and i and when i think back in those days like i really wasn't drawing much i was really i was just you know trying to start a band at the time so <laughs> um but again, like be you know in, in my hometown, being known as the kid who drew, like you know, uh, I've heard from you know my old friends, like yeah, you know, we thought you'd be in Disney and doing this and that, and <laughs> there's like that sense in me, I'm like uh, like kind of come down a little bit, or you know, like just, but you know, when when I have like my friends parents or even like teachers like kind of reach out and be like hey like you know just the fact that you're still doing this however whatever the route was like you know it's 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 good it's nice to see and um, I often feel that way with like even my my college classmates but yeah like talent will only get you so far like they always saw me as a talent but I was also a fuck up and I fell off for a bit. So it's like, you know, so that's why um, when people are always like, when people comment on 
I don't know, like, I, I don't know if it's, like, arrogant or, or what, but, like, when people compliment, compliment each other just based off talent, I'm just kind of like, meh. Because <laughs> I just, I, I genuinely believe everyone is talented. They just have to sometimes find it on their own or hear from right. others, and it's up to mm -hmm. them to, to carry that on. But, um, yeah, um, there was something that, that did pique my interest when you were telling me your background, and, and that is your, your husband being an artist as well. Is, is he <laughs> a full-time artist? No, he's not. Uh, um yeah he he's the breadwinner in our house uh, um <laughs> and I am a stay-at-home mom and now with um both my kids in school full-time it's given me a lot of extra time to be able to focus on my art stuff so um I was like well let me give myself a couple years of trying full-time art and just see kind of where it takes me um but yeah, he he was very much the art kid in his school. And um, yeah, we still have like a bunch of his pieces and stuff that his mom has saved. And um, he, I sometimes like, I'm like, just go paint something, like go be creative for a minute. Cause I feel like he needs that push. Mm. Um, but he's also a musician too. So oh, sometimes, yeah, he, um, I have to, remind him like go sneak downstairs for a little bit i'll watch the kids go dink around on your bass guitar and oh, go do your thing so stop in the basement <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it's funny um so when we first met so i also play bass guitar oh, um shit. i will say that loosely oh, because like i haven't i haven't picked it up in a long time and like i've dabbled with the ukulele but like oh, my God. I, awesome. I can Same. sing like <laughs> You can sing like happy birthday very poorly and like that's the extent of my ukulele skills oh my god <laughs> but um I didn't tell my husband uh when we first started dating that I could play bass guitar so one day we were at a party um and his friend had a bass set up in the basement so I picked it up and I just started like mm, slapping it and he his jaw like dropped and he's like what <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh... There's something like, um, not to like sound inappropriate here, but there's something oh, no. about when a when a female grabs an instrument and they can fucking shred. It's like <laughs> that's hot. I'm sorry, not to objectify women, but like that's pretty hot. <laughs> oh no, uh, female drummers like my favorite. Like oh, yeah. the feminine rage that comes out when they play is like oh yeah the best <laughs> i mean yeah like again like not to like i'm just trying to be careful with my words here but like not, i'm just i'm really preaching women that can that can shred on a guitar bass or hit the drum like you know uh, any woman that can like rock an instrument like got all my respect and when and just like even when they have sort of that like yeah, like you're saying, being able to express that like showmanship or, you know, like, I don't, yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> noise, noise, noise. But, <laughs> I, <laughs> but I love that about you that you, you, you also, uh, that you also play an instrument. I, so, you know, during my, throughout my, I guess, like my music phase, I was self taught on guitar. I really, I didn't really write music. I, I've written stuff, but it's like just lame, like emo shit. But um, uh, but uh, you know, and then I would, I went, I, I tried bass a little bit. Um, and then I also have a ukulele as well. And every <laughs> every once in a while, I'll pick it up, pick it up, and like <laughs> learn a couple of like riffs here and there. But yeah, it's, it's not for my fingers. I got the uh, Vienna sausage <laughs> fingers. Hey. yeah i can see where that was. well it's so tiny too yeah <laughs> and just like and just like strumming patterns like i'm just so used to like trying to strum like a regular guitar right like, you no know, if you want to hit a, a, you know uh, a ukulele to like jingle like if you like um what's that famous like hawaiian song the the over the rainbow 
Yeah, somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah, I can't like remember that. his name. Yes. But like, you know, like that traditional um, you know, strumming pattern. Like I can't I, yeah. for the life of me, I can never keep that rhythm going. Like I always <laughs> just do my own shit, but um but every now and then I'll I'll do a little bit of finger picking and just like try to get a couple of like tunes out. Um cuz I do believe in like yeah, kind of like getting um having that another out creative outlet even if you're just kind of BSing on it and just want to like just jam, right. jam. <laughs> we we should do like an online challenge thing where uh... every now and then we'll just hop on Instagram live <laughs> and just like <laughs> play little things <laughs> so awful <laughs> I mean yeah, cause... I no, there was a point where I was like I was like sharing videos of like me just trying a, a riff from a song and like I would ask like people online and be like, oh, like what song would you like to would you like to hear me try to play? And um, I mean, I obviously I didn't keep up with it because it's just it's 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 another discipline that sometimes you got. It's like I don't have the time to be as dedicated. But um, anywho. I don't want to get. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll lose track of time just talking about getting it out. But I, I will say, I, I love that about you that we, we have that common. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, um, being a mother of two, um, yeah. So like now that you're, you're both your kids are in school and you have this time to. Um, make art um is there anything that like you're working on at the moment um so I have been experimenting a lot with abstract landscapes oh. um there's an artist oh my gosh her name escapes me now she of course she's on YouTube <laughs> um oh I can't remember her name but her abstracts are so beautiful and she like when she paints them it is just chaos like she will like wet the whole paper, slap some paint down. She paints with a cut up credit card to oh. like get the paint on the paper. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, it's fascinating. And then she'll like tilt the paper around and she's got her little spray bottle that like if something's not like quite how she wants it, she'll just use her little squirt bottle and like spray it off and then everything will like shift the other way. And just the way she paints is like, is so fascinating to me. And so I've been experimenting a lot with more abstract landscapes lately, but I mean, it's nothing that I feel like I would share with anyone yet. Like I'm still, it's very close to the chest still. I'm like, mm, I don't know about sharing these with anyone. Yeah. You're like still very much in like the experimental phase. Like, yes, like yes. And I'm doing a lot of um, commission work right now for Mother's Day. Nice. So um, doing florals that incorporate um, birth flowers. So that's been fun because typically my commissions are like pet portraits. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to be able to step out of the pet uh, box and into the floral box is something a little bit different. So that's been fun nice yeah um from some of the from some of the pieces that i've seen on your page it does seem it it appears that we we all like we both work work in a similar um dimensions like you don't you don't particularly work in large scales do you i don't um but i would love to i yeah. the, the thing with the watercolor though is like large scale means large brushes and yeah. so those get to be very expensive however yeah keeping in mind that i mean some people paint with cut up credit cards <laughs> maybe i need to get a little more creative with the tools that i'm using <laughs> right yeah i'm um i mean yeah like like yourself like i work I mean, the biggest piece I've I've worked on, um, it was a commission, and it was, um, it was uh, I think I want to say fourteen by seventeen, and that's the biggest I've. That's I've pretty good size. 
Um, and I mean, I, <laughs> I, I only used a large brush just for the background for it, which was like nothing, um, nothing, uh, tedious. Like it was just like a sky cloudy background, but, um, I, I too, um, would like to work on a larger scale, but just like you said, materials get expensive that way. Um, Cause like you use like the fine brushes, right? Um, sometimes it depends. So usually like, um, a 12 round or an eight round. I don't know if that means anything to you <laughs> cause sort I know of. you're typically like idea. ink and pencils. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, nothing, I have an idea. <laughs> nothing like least... extreme, like it fits in like a drawer in my kitchen. So <laughs> yes. Yeah. So same. Mm hmm Yeah, I well, I used to work at Michael's, and um, so you know those discounts really helped. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I've had like I have some larger brushes that I've yet used. Like I would use every once in a blue moon, but I don't know. There's just something about like because like I have large paper too. Like I have plenty of like paper material that I can just use at my disposal. But I'm just like something's holding. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's just like staying it's in the there. You need zone. to use it. <laughs> I know. Well, like that's the thing. Like I still use the paper. I just use them if I if I'm gonna like work even like working on smaller things. Like I just take the large sheets and then I cut them down to cut them up. <laughs> just use all the scraps, you know, as much as I as I can. Like, all right, I'll just take this, you know, uh, you know, fourteen by seventeen paper and then I'll cut a nine by twelve out of it and then, you know make some sketch cards out of the rest of the scraps and yeah. you know, <laughs> instead of just making one big piece like i i can comfortably i can comfort yeah comfortably god uh i i'm okay working with uh 12 by um 12 by 18 but that's as big as i can like comfortably work in but uh mm -hmm. I always find myself working, going back, scaling Smaller. down, working on more fun uh, little paintings. Um, but another thing I want to ask you was that um, how do you uh, how do you decide on what you're going to paint? Because you know, looking at your work, you know, we mentioned about you know food portraits, pet portraits, um, like. I mean, you even got some, uh, the your astronaut piece, which is really cool. Thank um, you. Yeah. So like, um, how do you decipher when, or like, is it a matter of like what mood you're in or, or what, but how do you, how do you like get to that point of like, oh, I'm going to paint these Vienna sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Vienna sausage wearing a flower crown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to paint this pretty hot dog also wearing a flower <laughs> crown. <laughs> yeah, like that's such an interesting Oh image. my god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I saw the the Vienna sausage, that really that really <laughs> cut me like got me that to my core because I mean, I grew, you know, I'm I'm Filipino and that was something we ate uh growing up. So when I saw that can of sausage i'm like oh man i was like i could go for some vienna sausage and rice right now <laughs> i have honestly never tried them um i oh. someone had like uh when i, I want to say it was my friend who's a photographer she had suggested a can of vienna sausages and i was like well she said vienna sausage and i was like well that'll probably get me banned if i paint a vienna sausage but <laughs> I could do a can of Vienna sausages. <laughs> um, I don't know, something about like the absurdity of it and just like <laughs> the fact that somebody like took the time to paint that. Like, have you seen um, <laughs> the oil paintings of like a mug of um, Lucky Charm cereal? It's no. like beautifully done. I wish I could remember the artist. I'll have to send it to you if I find it. Um, yeah. But it's just the fact that like somebody took like hours out of their life to create this glorious portrait of a mug of Lucky Charms cereal with milk in them. 
something about the fact that people took the time to like paint that. It's just, it, I don't know. It tickles something in my soul that I just, it just makes me happy. <laughs> yep. Noah Verrier, maybe? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Noah uh, is are, are they a friend? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be. Uh, That's why I called it very. <laughs> I'm gonna be very pretentious to say Noah Velier. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that that is so funny. I'm gonna make sure I uh, cut to this in the final edit so that people can <laughs> see it. But um, but I get it though. There is something about this piece that's like, huh. I know, right? And it's so beautiful too. Like the light yeah. hitting the the rainbow uh, marshmallow. <laughs> I don't know. No, I, yeah, there's something about it. It's it, I I like. <laughs> should I? That's the thing too. Like, um, yeah. If if I I would I would I would have this I would have this framed in my studio if I could. Right. I I mean maybe and maybe that's why I myself um paint these uh food portraits as well um, yeah what is it that you like why do you like to do the food portraits so mine is uh it, it's it's kind of silly um so I'm, I'm guilty of taking food selfies <laughs> so um i i don't know i i just i thought uh the only way i could justify it is that if i'm gonna take this selfie um this food selfie instead of posting it I i'm just gonna paint it and then i'll post it like i'll post <laughs> I like it. that <laughs> so like so any like whatever paintings of food that i share online like those were photos i took myself as opposed to like taking a, a random photo reference and painting off of that it's like yeah i took this photo I took this selfie, I painted it, like, and that justifies my guilt of, you know, <laughs> taking that moment to take to, to get the shot. Like, I don't know, it's it's really just an <laughs> internal thing. There's really no real logic other than like I can sleep at night knowing that <laughs> I will paint this or I have painted this. Um, but yeah, That's <laughs> and I, I I hope to. Um, I hope to have uh, a, a a solo exhibit to to display all all my paintings. Like, I mean, I have so many photos from, you know, all these restaurants I've eaten at, like all these wonderful display, like wonder wonderfully displayed dishes. So, like, you know, I I hope to uh, hold an exhibit which I will call um, the food court, and. <laughs> Yeah, it's just going to be like dishes from like New Zealand, uh, local eateries here in Richmond, and uh, even like just homemade meals. Like it's just going to be like, this is what this artist eats, <laughs> like kind of thing. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that that's the uh, generally how I got into painting food. Um, also, like I don't know, like. I'm trying to think what was like the first thing. I think it was a, a two piece and a biscuit. I I painted, and I was kind of like, you know, it was like my first still life of food. I think, and um, I wasn't sure how was, how I felt, but then when I was finished, I was like, this actually looks pretty good, <laughs> and <laughs> and it, it was like such a hassle to sell at these. Yeah, markets. didn't you? Wasn't it like recently you sold that? Uh, or like within the last yeah, so, year, uh, I saw yeah, like last yeah, like I think like late last summer or last fall, but um, yeah, like <laughs> I was because I'm trying to think. I painted that in like 2000, 2001 or two thousand two. I can't remember now, but yeah, I've had that for at least a year, and every time I displayed it to to try to sell it. You know, people would always comment on it and be like, "Oh, that looks good. Oh, that's making me hungry," and I'm like. <laughs> I was like, oh. are you going to buy it? <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> please don't buy the actual food and buy my paintings. <laughs> Although he can't eat the painting, I guess. <laughs> well, he I, could, I can't but... blame them, right? I can't blame them for being like, I'd rather spend 12 bucks at Popeye's than 
you know, whatever, how how much you're charging for. But uh, it was it was becoming an issue for me because I'm like, if I keep hanging this, like I couldn't just like display it in my in my workspace because I'm like, I, I get food cravings so easily. So there was a one there was at one point um, I had one of my grids set up in front of my desk and it had like and this was when I was kind of going through that beginning phase of like working out all of the, the food portraits that I have. At, um, at this moment so I had them hanging on the grid in front of my desk so like I would see I would see like you know the, the two-piece chicken and my one peripheral and then my other peripheral I'm seeing the chicken and fries and I'm like oh I'm just see food in my peripheral I'm like I'm so hungry <laughs> I could never paint Taco Bell I would be in big trouble <laughs> oh it, it, yeah it's tough because again th these are <laughs> these like paintings are of dishes that I've had so it's like it's clearly stuff I enjoy and yeah if I yeah I mean if I'm looking at the bacon egg and cheese I'm like shit I wish I was in Jersey right now and get me a nice bacon egg and cheese <laughs> yeah but Just dreaming uh, about it <laughs> <laughs> yeah But um, it's it's a nice it's a nice little escape though too. Like aside from like other stuff that I work on, yeah, uh, yeah, it's a nice change of pace and whatnot. So I, I I imagine you can resonate with that in terms of like having different uh, you know subject matters, different themes, or or however you want to phrase it. Just having different things that you can paint. Like it's a nice change of pace of like just like sticking to one type of style of art. Yeah, like you had asked, how do I decide like what to work on? And um, I like commissions get blocked into my schedule first, which maybe it shouldn't be like that, but um, they get blocked in first just because I have this weird thing where like I cannot paint with like somebody else around me oh, <laughs> or like watching. I feel yeah. And so, like, um, I have to completely block out, like, last week was spring break for my kids, so I had to block that out because, granted, I would be able to, like, slip in and out of working on it. It's like, when you're, like, in the zone and someone's like, I want chicken nuggets, it's, like, enraging. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. or we're out of toilet paper you know like, <laughs> like can't you see i'm in the zone <laughs> i mean it's like it's like when writers authors have to like rent out a cabin to get their <laughs> book out like i mean it's it's almost like that to an extent it's like yeah i need to be locked in on my on my project here no distress yes yeah so i'll like i'll i'll get my commission stuff um locked in on the calendar and then I just kind of go with like whatever I'm feeling whatever catches my attention at the moment I'll paint on like I've got so I did my first collection of the outer space stuff when was that like two years ago um and then like I randomly painted one last like October November And had planned on doing like a second collection revolving around, I call them my big and little astronaut. Um, and I just like, like around, one. yeah, around like their relationship. Mm -hmm. um, but that uh, painting ended up selling before I was finished with it. Oh, and wow. I like once I finished with it, I, I was like, well, I, uh, I like I had sketched out a couple more ideas, but I feel like maybe like that was it. <laughs> for yeah. that so we'll see like I'm open to doing more of those but um it's just kind of like so now I've got spring spring is coming up or I guess spring is here but planting season for me in Utah is coming up in a couple weeks okay. and I have a cut flower garden so I've been a little distracted starting my seeds for that so I'm sure that like florals insects like honeybees and bumblebees I'm sure will be showing up in my art more it just kind of depends on like whatever I'm infatuated with at the moment I guess so are we gonna are we gonna see like a can of corned beef with like a <laughs> beetle on top of no, I'm kidding. 
<laughs> Definitely needs a flower crown. <laughs> <laughs> Put a flower crown on it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that makes me think about that. Uh, that uh, I don't know. If, I I don't really watch it often, but like I've seen clips of like South Park with the whole thing with the uh, Disney. Hey, are you from you know? I I, I haven't. Well, no. no, is that like more it's, recent? I haven't watched South Park in a couple of years. Yeah, same. I don't follow it, but I just keep every. I just hear a lot of people refer to it, especially like with just like wokeness. But th there's like a thing where it's like well, with movies. Um, Cartman be like, put a chick in it and make her gay. It's like almost <laughs> like you know whatever your the winning is. formula. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. it's like I'll oh, put a flower crown on it. I know. <laughs> Uh, it's true <laughs> but it's i mean that is unique that 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 approach with your flower crowns um <laughs> i mean right it's like it, it to to some people it's obscure but you can't i know right <laughs> and deny how how elegant it makes it all together it's like i know right <laughs> the you know the pop tart like the pop tart um painting that you have like that one came out beautifully Thank you. I know the purple in it is like, <laughs> uh, yeah, the per. So it's funny because I I just recently painted um a pop tart as well. It was a uh, um because there's this um Filipino baker that made these uh, ube flavored pop tarts, and uh, what is ube like? Please educate it's, um, me. It's basically a um, it's like a it's basically like a red potato or or purple potato. Okay yeah or purple yam okay That's all it really is but ube is it's a bit it's like a big thing in our culture okay uh, and then you know it makes everything purple um <laughs> but um yeah but when, when i tried it i was like oh this is this is really good and i haven't had a pop like a regular pop tart in ages um so again me being the type of artist i am i ate it i'm like this is delicious i'm gonna paint it I took a picture of it, did my thing, um, but I I had even prior to that I did see your 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 pop tar and I was like yeah this is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've eaten so many pop tarts since I painted that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Just, wild berry is like the best flavor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at your work right now and it is it's very beautiful. Um your flower work, your 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 animal portraits too, like Well thanks, I, G. You're making me blush over here. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so you know, this, this is what we gotta do as you know, as supporting artists. Um I I I, I admire I especially admire your your animal portraits because I don't do animals enough, nearly mm. enough. And um there was uh, one point where I painted my first um, raven, and I got so many compliments, and I felt really proud of myself because, like, again, I never painted a bird before. Yeah. And, um, just being able to execute on like, just trying to portray the different layers of like of of the feathers, like even not even the layers of the feathers, but like you know how like the coloring of their the feathers? sheen, yeah, yeah, that's it, the sheen. Like it's hard to to try to well for me, it's hard to try to emulate that in the painting, but I I I'm you know grateful to to have uh, heard all these wonderful comments about like how well I did. I'm like. It's my first try. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. So like, and and seeing, um, you know, looking at at your, you know, uh, particularly your your dog, uh, portraits. Like again, the way you've, um, yeah, the way you've executed the fur. Like it looks, you know, it looks like fur. So oh, thank you. I I um, love painting those. It's um like. So I always put the eyes in last and I'm not sure why, because that's like literally the best part. Interesting. <laughs> like, yeah, that's like what makes it come to life really. So it's, I've had to really learn to trust myself because as I'm sure, you know, what, with watercolors, there's like a really like ugly, like middle stage where you're like, uh, <laughs> do I need to throw this away and start over? 
but yeah. I've had to learn to like really trust myself and push through the mm-hmm. ugly middle stage. Um, and then, through. yeah. And then once the eyes go in, it's like, Oh, okay. And like, I'm a little weirdo where like, I'll talk to the portrait. <laughs> Like, once the eyes go in like I always I will always ask the um client like what their pet's name is and like their personality and that kind of thing um speaking of pets I just saw a cat tail whip by yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it <laughs> anyways so like once the eyes go in I'm, I'm always like oh hello and then whatever the pet's name is or <laughs> It's so dumb. <laughs> and my kids are always, that's always what they ask me too. Oh, who's this dog that you painted today? What's their name? And so um, <laughs> it's kind of fun. I love it. <laughs> like pet names. I don't know. There's something about them. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's funny you said that because I saw this, uh, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big stand-up fan, like stand-up comedy. And there was a uh, a comedian that had this bit that like it's funny how especially nowadays like uh, parents like name their kids names that you would name a like a pet. So you could have like I don't know uh, I forget what his examples were, but let's just like you know you sure you could see a, a dog being named like Adonis or something like that, <laughs> but like. Like how how often do you hear of like a kid being named Adonis or or I don't know a kid named Rover? <laughs> yeah, like it's like yeah, this is yeah, it's like um oh man, I wish I could I could like um do his bit, but it's just like yeah, this is a uh, you know this is <laughs> this is my dog uh uh yeah Adonis and this is no this is my son Adonis and this is my dog Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I love <laughs> dogs with people names. That's the yeah. best. <laughs> yeah. Um, Clyde. <laughs> oh, what was I had a there was uh, something I was gonna ask you. Um, it'll come back to me later. But uh, oh, no. oh dang, my mind just went blank. <laughs> That's a problem on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. You'll edit it out. <laughs> no. It's fine. It's fine. This this used to be typical in the early in the early years, but um, yeah. Oh boy, <laughs> I really wish I I could pull it out of my brain because it was a good question, uh, in regards <laughs> to paint. Um, but anywho, um, it had to do with the uh, portraits. Oh, okay. Yes, I did it. Um. <laughs> I do find it interesting that you said that you you save the eyes for last because I I'm not I'm the opposite like I the the eyes are always the first thing or one of the first things I execute like it's like oh, it's, like, funny. it's, a, it's <laughs> like I I I don't know if it has anything to do with me being a lefty or or what but like I'll always do one eye I guess it, it it's a matter of like um uh like symmetry or or something like especially like in portraits, whether it's like an animal or a person, but I always, I'll do one eye and then I guess depending on the mood or confidence, I'll do the other eye or I'll do the nose. And I kind of use those landmarks to like, you know, to get my measurements of like the facial structure. So I always like, we'll start, I I always start with an eye and then I just work my way out. Mm Mm-hmm. But in turn, like, but when you're talking about when you're sort of in that middle phase of like, you start to feel a bit doubtful. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel that as well, um, especially after like the first coat of paint, like after getting that first layer in, like just mm-hmm. like, basic colors, and I'm like, this looks weird. <laughs> and then like, you know, when you work the nerve and the courage to like just keep pushing through mm-hmm. to the end, and then you start adding more layers, more depth of color, and all that, and it's like, oh, okay, I like this now. Yeah. Oh, I can paint. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't <Yeah>. forget. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seriously, like, and um, I did a post about that, and like, it's just like you know, for a lot of artists that have that that sort of like that anxiety, it's like sometimes you just gotta 
keep going, you know, like we, mm -hmm. uh, we, we often preach about trusting the process, but I also <laughs> think it's about just being present as well. And it's just like, you know, remember, like you've been doing this for <laughs> however long, like, you know what you're doing, like, don't yeah, doubt yourself, <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. Yeah, got to do the little pep to, talk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We always have to have yes. that pep talk and just coach ourselves through and be like, yeah, right, it's cool. Oh, you fucked up that that stroke there, but it's all right. You can always like, you know, you can fix it, <laughs> improvise or, or, you know, erase it or get some water and just dab it out, whatever <laughs> it takes. Right? Like, yeah. Well, yeah, that's a skill in itself, too, is knowing like how to cover up your mess ups or like incorporate them. <laughs> I think that's yeah. you got to get creative. Tough. <laughs> yeah, and especially with watercolor. Again, like this is part of that, like, um, sort of embracing that that controlled chaos because it's like, oh shit, I put too much water, and now it's like bleeding out the color, or, or like, <laughs> it just yeah, it's yeah. it's again unforgiving. <laughs> but there's something about it. I guess it's like when the the rewards of getting through it. It's just like, mm -hmm. you know, I I let the medium do its thing, and it worked out. Like it's, not like it's not like acrylic or oil where you can just like all right i'll just whitewash this shit right and then re and start from the beginning it's like uh it's either i trash it or like improvise <laughs> exactly well and it helps too sometimes i'll remind myself like it's just a piece of paper like at the end of the day <laughs> that's true i that's something i don't have i guess i i don't know is that if that counts as like separation anxiety or what but there I is can't like, let go of it. <laughs> it it's like especially if it's like a mess up like i don't like wasting things mm -hmm. maybe because of my i don't know maybe in the past like i just was much more careless and now i'm like nope every <laughs> every penny every dime matters <laughs> like I, you know like i gotta make use of everything I have. <laughs> so i always have that bit of like like even um there was um this one time, uh, this happened like I think earlier this year. I was uh just sitting down. I was kind of coming out of my inactivity of like just drawing, and I was like just about to sketch something. And um, I had allergies, so I'm I'm sitting on the couch. I'm about to sketch, and I sneezed, and all this oh, no. <laughs> came out and just hit the paper and i'm like oh fuck! <laughs> <laughs> and then you know me not wanting to waste the paper i was like oh, oh no. no so i i i so i i pulled i i ripped i tore the paper out i crumpled it and i'm like some i i gotta i don't know make something out of this moment so then like i took a picture of my hand with the crumpled paper and then i just drew that <laughs> sort of like as like a <laughs> memorial of like this page you know will not go unknown <laughs> buried it in your backyard <laughs> so before i toss it in the trash this is the picture i drew of the paper that was that used to be here <laughs> yeah i don't know what that is though that's, that's weird i haven't figured that out yet that's funny <laughs> yeah um now now this is like a general uh it, it could be a loaded question but um what what do you like most about art um hmm. i think i like that two people can view the same piece of art and get two completely different things out of it um that's like one of my favorite things when I I don't often get to hear like how people are interpreting um for example like my outer space pieces mm. and so to when I do get to hear that it's always so interesting to me because it's very different from like what it meant to me creating it and just the fact that someone can view the exact same thing um and take like something completely different is like really cool to me yeah yeah well right you know the viewer um how would i want to articulate it yeah like you never know what is in the headspace of the mm -hmm. so it's just like <laughs> you know like and to uh, see like the different ways people project their own stuff that they've got going on onto the artwork is interesting 
Yeah, it's kind of like um, like when you hear a song, and like mm -hmm. the song itself just sounds so beautiful, so freeing, whatever. But then you sit down and listen to the lyrics. It's like, oh, this shit is dark. What the hell? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like um, who was it that did um the pumped up kick song? Yes, that is so example. dark. <laughs> And oh everyone's just like listening to it. <laughs> yeah. So funny, <laughs> At this skating rink, they're blasting it and all the kids are skating to it. <laughs> yeah. <It's> like... <laughs> so, that's so funny you brought that up because like uh I was like on this uh it was a family trip. Uh me and my wife, uh, I think we were still dating then, but we were on the road. Um uh, I think we were visiting family for like the holidays. And her mom was driving us and that song came on and she's like, you know, just like jamming out and like singing along the chorus, like the hook and everything. And I was like, hey, you know, this is about school shootings. And she's like, what? I was like, yeah, listen, <laughs> listen to the lyrics. And she just stopped. She just stopped dancing. She's just like, Oh, and I'm like sorry. <laughs> I'm like, but that's, you know, that's, that, that, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just again it's that's that's that is the the wild aspect of i guess like yeah just being an artist is that you can be in a certain headspace but whatever it is that you put out um the way it, it can translate and then the way the eye of the beholder takes it it's like you know they, they get like you were just saying in the, in the beginning it's like they can look at it and you're both looking at the same thing, but you're both coming with a different story. Mm -hmm. um, almost yeah. kind of like what Lennon talks about in the beginning of the uh, the CIA program. Like, do you remember? Do you remember like, like the video he would share with um, uh, the film with like the box and like the the circles, like the or the triangles. No. You know, I so don't remember that. Did I miss that? Maybe this is why I <laughs> bowed out because. I missed something super important. You know, it's like this video of um yeah, it's like this there's like this big square which is like a room. It's um and um oh I might get the shapes wrong, but I don't I don't think it's relevant. But you got like these two like circles. Or there's three shapes, uh two like two big ones and a small one, and the two big ones are like it looks like they're fight. So this is how I interpret it. Oh, okay. I think maybe I do remember this. It was the like fighting a... sounds familiar. Well, yeah. So I I always interpret it as like parents fighting, and then the child is just in the room, locked in the room, and just yes. Okay, I do know the video you're talking about. Yeah. Now. So it's kind of like <laughs> yeah. But like that's what I what I think of when uh you know discussing this. It's like yeah, like because I and. That's kind of it's a well, it's not fresh, but like it's in my head still because uh, we did just kind of watch that somewhat recently, um, because he was asking this this newer member mm. uh, about it, and then he put me on the spot and asked what I saw, and I'm like, <laughs> I look at a, it's kind of like domestic, you know, <laughs> like a domestic <laughs> thing, and I described it, and you know, the whole lesson of it is like what I see is, you know, in some cases different than what the other person will see. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. I, yeah, I don't know. That's one of my favorite things. Just <laughs> being able, yeah. Just being able to interpret art differently than others. Yeah. Oh, I have a question sure. <laughs> to take us in a different track. Yeah. Um, do you, you ever hide little things in your art like I know that you have the one with your cat's silhouette right oh, yes yes do you like have do you have any other things like that you Easter hide? eggs yes oh yes it's uh um... you're willing to share <laughs> oh yeah yeah absolutely I oh man see I kind of wish I had like my art my my paintings with me but um so yeah I uh I do like to hide Easter eggs. I particularly do that in my one art series. It's called Tech Utopia, and it's a oh, uh, mm -hmm. it's a dystopian um, series. But um, 
Yeah, in some of those paintings, there are words that are hidden in there um, that kind of describe, you know, what it is that you're seeing or perhaps even hint at what the meaning of the painting is. So, um, for example, and I've always enjoyed doing this. I just decided, like, it's going to be for this art series when I'm really doing it um, a lot. Um but um, one of the paintings uh, that uh, at least like the community here have been gravitating towards is uh, it's it's called the title is Zombie, and um, it's a woman kind of like wrapped in this wire and she's got this visor on, kind of like DR. Okay. Yeah, I know the the piece you're talking about. Oh, okay, so <laughs> in, in the visor, it actually says Zombie on it. It's okay. Weird. Um, there's another one that's uh that's less obvious. Um, it was actually one of the beginning pieces of the series. It's um, it's the it's like it's a brain that's like in um, you know, in this like container, and its eyes are watching all of these monitors of all of these like world events. Um, I mean, this was like during like the peak of quarantine. So it's this brain that's looking at all these monitors, all these happenings, and um, I always forget the, the 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 brain pieces. What are they called again? Um, oh, like the two halves, like the cortex, oh, like the, the, the thing that makes up the brain, the cerebellum, the <laughs> oh the. <laughs> the like weird the, wavy pink part <laughs> yes thank you <laughs> so yes so that in the brain it, it spells out the words help me because oh, okay. it's like it's watching it's like seeing you know the whole like um you know it's seeing like invasions it's seeing like the virus it's seeing you know, this was during like the Brianna Taylor incident. Mm -hmm. So it's like seeing all these things, and it's I mean the, the title of the painting is Overload. So it's just like it's watching all of these things that are happening, but because it's just a brain and all it can do is just watch and take in this stuff, it's like fuck, like help me. <laughs> like I don't know, I can't do anything about this. So, like, yeah. I, so that's like another example and yeah I just I I do that with um with uh several other pieces but I yeah I I do enjoy hiding easter eggs because like you know as as an observer I like to um yeah if I look at a painting or something and I you know kind of like extrapolating and just see the big picture and I'm like it looks like this thing could potentially have hidden hidden things in it. I'll like, mm -hmm. I'll scrutinize something, even if it does. Like, even if the piece doesn't <laughs> have any Easter eggs, I'll still scrutinize it to see if there are like any like fine details or anything about. You're it. determined to find it. <laughs> yeah, I just like make it my own mission. So then I kind of like, I don't know. I kind of I I intentionally do that for for those for those uh pieces in that series to like kind of like make like I try not to make it obvious but like I, I try to like let people figure it out on their own when they're, mm -hmm. they're looking at it long enough sometimes people be like this looks like something here and I'm like oh well, yeah you know oh really it doesn't <laughs> especially <laughs> especially like you brought up the you know the one with my cat um mm -hmm. I call those uh pareidolia pieces yes okay I I couldn't remember the word for it yeah, pareidolia, and um, yeah, I have several other like landscape pieces um that are like that. Like I have like a lot of cliff or like mountain ones where if you can look at it uh close closely, like you can see that uh like these mountains are my hands, you know. Like I like doing stuff like that. So um, yeah, they're just really fun. It's just like a nice uh. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a nice way to play with your imagination and your creativity. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I agree. I don't really have anything. Mine are a little more personal, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so like for some of my astronauts, um, 
the big astronaut initially was going to have um, my mom's face in the uh, helmet visor. And uh huh. And um, I eventually, so I like drew her face in, and then eventually I decided to um, just fill it in so it was like a reflection of the universe kind of thing in the helmet. Um, because I, something about, it, I feel like it leaves a little more mystery to the art. And I, and again, it comes back to allowing people to project their own meaning onto a painting. So like, you know, for me, that astronaut is clearly my mom, but for someone else, it's their husband or their grandfather or, you know, something like that. Is it the um, one that's like holding the little one like this or is it the one that's like face to face? Um, it's the one that's got the the little baby astronaut. Yeah, but it's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a you know, um, yeah, that's a that's another beautiful piece that you have there, and I, I love the way you executed, the like the space atmosphere of it, especially on those on uh, the at the uh the helmet. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, like the bright white that's like bursting out. Like that was a total accident, and that comes back to why I love watercolor so much. Yeah. You know, you just drop clean water there and come back an hour later. And it's like, oh, my God, this helmet has the universe in it. <laughs> you know that? Yeah, actually, that's a that's a that's a beautiful way to put it. It's like, yeah, you can just the way the, the water works uh, itself out. Like, yeah, you can create space so much <laughs> easier that way, as opposed to however you would do it with uh, with the other mediums like. Again, it's just like, let me just add a little dab of paint in this area and mm-hmm. let it wash <laughs> out and spread out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that one, I love, I love that. I, I mean, I, in general with the, cause like I, I see your other uh, astronaut piece that looks like it's in, it's in the works, but I do love when they are together, the two astronauts, when their, their helmets are touching together, like, it unifies that sort of like um, I don't know how you would call it, but like not a sunburst, but like that bright burst of like in the space, like it's unified. Mm-hmm. Like, but yeah, it's all about connection and yeah. Yeah, I love it. And I've got there's one that's got a rocket in it, and like the number on the rocket is my mom's birthday. So oh. just like little things like that, I like to tuck in as like a little homage to her. So I love it. And then yeah, I think, so... mm-hmm. go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. <laughs> um, the names of the pieces in that space collection are all either, they're all like pieces of lyrics of songs that are like about outer space. So because music means a lot to me too. So I like to incorporate that. Is that like a, a line in the sky? Mm-hmm. A, a poem. Oh yeah, that one's got the poem behind it. Um, but that one is lyrics from uh a band called Golden Earring. I don't know if you've heard of them. <laughs> no, I haven't, but <laughs> um, but it's yeah, I I have had a lot of like weird experiences with music and relating to my mom. So I mean, I could totally get into the woods on that. But <laughs> I mean, is that is it? Did she is she a um like was was she responsible for like introducing you to music or like different types of music or just even exploring your your love for music? Yeah, so both of my parents, um, music means a lot to them. Like, um, my dad told me when they first got married, they would, like, specifically set aside money in the budget for a new record day and, like, go buy new records and stuff. So, like, their record collection was massive. And, um, like, Sundays was our family cleaning day, so they would throw on a record and we would go crazy cleaning the house while the music played. And um, I go to concerts a lot with my dad. And so music is, well, my name's Rhiannon, and, like, I'm named after a song. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> music means a lot to our family. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I... I... I used to be so obsessed with music. I mean, I still enjoy music, but I mean, 
I'm terrible. I'm really bad. I'm not the person you want to ask, like, what's your favorite type of music? Or, like, who are your top favorite artists? I'm like, oh. Because being, uh, I've had this discussion with Kristen, like, being the youngest out of four, I've got to be introduced to not only different eras of music, but, you know, just different genres. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And like, so I, I go, you know, I always pride myself on being a fan of, um, you know, late nineties, early two thousands, hip hop and R and B because of my older brother. But then because of my older sister, I then got into like rock music, alternative rock, uh, you know, Linkin Park, uh, fuel, uh, corn, limp biscuit, you know? Um, and then my, my oldest sibling, He got me into like other like cultural music and like orchestral music and stuff. So it's like, again, like, you know, just having this wide variety, like this plethora of like musical taste. It's like, it's so hard for me to answer like, oh, these are my top five or whatever. Like, it's just very much like whatever the mood strikes kind of thing. Um mm-hmm. But um, no, that that's beautiful. That connection with music, uh, and I guess is that does that also uh, attribute to you um, playing bass as well? Um. Yeah. I mean, I always wanted to learn how to play an instrument. Okay. Um. And then when I was like twelve or thirteen, me and my best friend decided that we were definitely starting a band. And she was going to play guitar. And I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll play bass. <laughs> like not knowing much about it. And so, and my dad, he's always so great. Like anything that I've ever wanted to try, he like is fully supportive of it. So he bought me a bass guitar and an amp for Christmas. And he got me tickets to go see Victor Wooten, which I don't know if you know who that is, but oh, not by name at least. <laughs> oh my gosh. He is like an amazing bassist and just all around musician. Um, but, and then my mom got me lessons to learn bass. And then my friend never learned to play guitar. <laughs> There's always that one slacker in the band. <laughs> It kind of brings me back to the days when I when I would uh, try to start a band with my high school friends. Like in our case, it was our drummer who was phenomenal. Like he he was able to play. Um, like you know, you have your lefty and righty, whatever. Like he was able to play both, right? Wow. Um. (laughs) But he at the time he was just such a major fucking stoner that he would <laughs> miss out on practice and it's always the drummer. <laughs> yeah, typically, yeah. <laughs> You're right. But I just but also like, yeah, there's always out there is always a member of the band <laughs> just missing out. But yeah, it's true. I mean, so my husband was also in a band and um this was like when we first got married, so he wasn't like in high school, but, um, their drummer was fantastic. And he was also their vocalist and their keyboardist. And like to watch him play was just like (laughs) mind blowing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's like a full on, like, that's like a straight up musician. I know. Right. (laughs) Can't even just call them a drummer or, and I, I love those type of musicians too. Like that can, do like the jack of all trades like i love that it's awesome and their way their brain works is like amazing yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I, I would i would be so intimidated to have to try to co- carry conversations with them because something's going on in their head <laughs> dude you know trying to take over the world <laughs> something like or like even like you could you could just like say something and then the cadence of your sentence could like maybe strike a beat in their head and be like oh, that's a good rhythm. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but that might just be me i don't know sometimes i catch cadences and the way people <laughs> like huh. that should be a I'm song i'm just, just projecting now um, that reminds me of um Oh, I can't remember the YouTube channel. Um, it what they featured the keyboardist from Dream Theater. Oh, um, uh, Jordan. And, 
isn't like Jordan something, I think. I can't remember his last name. Yeah. Um, and he, they played um, Alicia Keys. Is it just called New York? Is that oh. what the song's called? Oh, really? um, they played that without the the keys in it. And they had him just improvise and play like how he thought it should go. Mm. And it was like the most fun, amazing thing to watch him do because he just like to watch him like work through it. Like it was a song that he claims he hadn't heard before. Uh And so like he I know I'm like, I'm sure Mm. that's a pretty big song. (laughs) Mm. Um, But he's also the keyboardist for Dream Theater. So he's probably listening to like (laughs) way technical stuff. I think his name is I think it's Jordan Rudess. I'm going to trust you because I, it escapes me. <laughs> I, have, I have to confirm this, otherwise it's going to bother me. But I'm pretty sure it's Jordan Rudess. And I, I used to, yeah, I, I went through, a, I used to love Dream Theater. My uh, dad loves them. I, I, I will, I mean, I, I'll say, um, I, I really enjoyed their, was it Train of Thought album? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the one that has like as I am and um um solitaire unravel no solitaire something oh boy it's been a, it's been a long time since I've listened to them but anyway I got <laughs> I just started typing Jordan Dream <laughs> but anyway they yeah they're they're a phenomenal band it yeah, is yeah they Jordan, really are yes. yeah yes so don't you I'll have to send you the link to it to just to watch him like work through it and like the way he plays it like it if you were to listen to it not knowing what it was you would clearly know that it was him Uh and then he just like goes into different styles like he goes into like a ragtime style with it and you can just tell he's having a good time but yeah like (laughs) musicians yeah i know (laughs) oh yeah just you're, you're you're making me go back to like when i was going through like my i guess like you know prog rock phase because mm-hmm. yeah i was just like taking in as much dream theater as i could i got into like steve i for a minute mm-hmm. um, trying to think who else i mean yeah i can just go on and on about it. <laughs> <laughs> just in terms of like the different types of music i would get really hooked on you know i like i don't know it, it's it's wild but um they don't I feel like they don't make them like they used to nowadays. It's unfortunate. I know, right? <laughs> Maybe it's like a like I find myself still like I'm I have a hard time like finding new music. Mm-hmm. And I find myself like clinging to like my comfort band. <laughs> I'm with and you. And now yeah. yeah, now like it makes sense like why my parents always you know listened to the old stuff from like the 70s and 80s because that's you know when they were coming of age and that's like when you're you're making all those connections with the music yeah absolutely um yeah i resonate with that as well like um you know um yeah in regards to discovering new artists like uh like <laughs> for the most part nowadays like if I get hooked on a, a new artist, it's just sort of like I just I don't want to say like I stumbled upon him. I just I happened to hear a clip on social media or something and I'd be like, oh, mm-hmm. shit, I like that. I want to hear more <laughs> that. and then, you know, and then it, it and then, you know, it'll it'll tie into like my root interest of like I like my comfort zone as of right now is going back to hip hop, you know, and like. I'm very much into like the boom bap um style of hip mm-hmm. um and um also like I'm lately I'm like drawn towards like like I don't know there's like these Asian artists that are like killing it right now in like okay like world. okay <laughs> yeah so like um so like right now like I'm really into this Filipino rapper. His name is Easy Mill. Um, and he's just phenomenal. Like he you can you can tell he's a student of of like the hip hop culture. He 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 raps 
he's he's like also multi talented because he can rap, he can spit, you know, freestyle, he can sing, he plays an instrument. Um, so in his music, he can transition from um not just Filipino to English, but he can transition from different Filipino uh dialects. Oh, okay. So, That's and it's cool. very wow. fluid. Yeah, very fluid and um yeah, so and and just also like just the the stuff he writes about as well. It just like it it it, it makes me um it inspires me to want to reconnect with my culture because I definitely feel a disconnect as as like, you know, since like the last few years I've been very like I just say Americanized, but mm. just disconnected from my culture. Like to the point, like I fell in love with another culture, you know, like the the New Zealand culture, the the Maori, like okay, I, yeah, like if like trans uh, race thing is like a real thing, like <laughs> I would definitely be like I identify as Maori because uh, uh yeah, that culture is amazing. It's yeah, a badass culture. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't even get me started on that. Um, I see your eyes light up. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm, I be, I, I became such a nerd being infatuated with that cult, with that culture that, um, I mean, I fell in love immediately once I discovered the haka. Mm -hmm. Um, then I started studying the dance moves, and then I started studying the 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 lyrics to the chanting, and yeah, and I I have like a. <laughs> I have like a Maori tattoo on my chest. <laughs> oh, you do! <laughs> <laughs> like we got it done in New Zealand during our honeymoon. Um, so, like, if like I could identify as Maori, I I totally would. <laughs> and I don't think anybody who knows me well, like people that know me very well, would be like, "Yeah, we saw that." That comment. makes sense. <laughs> like it, it was so bad to the point where, like, I learned like four different uh, war chants, and people like my friends would always just like send me videos of hakas be like hey check mm. this out <laughs> and sure enough i'll be like you know obviously I'm like yeah thanks for sharing that with me but i've seen that before and i studied it <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> like, <is old. laughs> yeah like i've seen this already bro but now um but yeah like so <clears throat> listening to this uh rapper has made me like more uh has really uh encouraged me and influenced me to like reconnect uh with the filipino culture um but also there's this other there's this like asian pop group it's this female group called xg and a lot of their music has like it's got some modern hip-hop um in, in their music but they also you can tell that they are brought up on boom bap like mm -hmm. hip hop as well, and they got like some R and B vibes in some of their music. Again, very talented. They have like they got it's a it's like a seven member group. Four of them are are rappers, and then the other three are singers. Um, and yeah, they can transition from Japanese to Korean to English very fluidly. It's like so. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I'm like I've been. <laughs> mainly into as of late and um other than that i'm still going to the old school stuff you know um i mean i'm sure you've seen some of my videos like i'm watching like 80s 90s cartoons and stuff so, like, yeah <laughs> you know and, and like even their soundtracks like just like man especially like the 80s cartoons the hooks <laughs> to their <laughs> uh opening sequences are like damn that's a that's a good that's a good song right there <laughs> it slaps <laughs> yeah right as the kids would say it slaps yeah. man it still slaps <laughs> it does though I, I i'd be like playing in my head every now and then it was just, yeah. but um yeah there was one thing i wanted to uh to kind of go back into like subliminal like easter eggs because you you said how you know your easter eggs in your artwork are more personal and i just kind of wanted to um connect with that and uh, by mentioning that um there is um i guess i could call him a character in my tech utopia series it's a robot and um uh, he, 
he has a name and it's it's shared with mine but like because you know you know me as g a lot of people uh know me as g uh which is short for for something else that i don't openly share unless uh, until you get to a certain level of knowing me <laughs> okay so like my like <laughs> I all, get my, that. <laughs> all my family my childhood friends um like they know what my my first full name is even my middle name but that being said there are these two robot characters where they have like a binary code on their chest and it it spells out my first name and my middle name but okay that's, that's little, so cool yeah, i love that that's the little thing i wanted to <laughs> add in there. i think that's <laughs> great so and do they appear in like multiple pieces across that series yeah actually um yeah uh and and they they're um uh, there's one in particular that's very popular um in 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 this community and it's um uh it's been a while since i shared it on social media but it's uh it's basically a robot looking at a monitor and he's putting on a tie okay yeah and the, the title of that one is called programmed and um yeah, I mean, like, uh, and when I hear people talk about it, it's very much the intent, the intent of of that piece, you know, just like, you know, being, you know, if you're like working a regular job, doing mm -hmm. your <laughs> regular day to day shit, your routines, like, because I was very much, you know, when I used to work an office job, that's how it was. Like, mm -hmm. I just felt like a robot. So, um, yes, <laughs> I was very happy that that resonated with a lot of people. Sold many prints, but. I had to I had to pull that stuff out uh down from uh doing events because like I'm very I'm very grateful to to be having a uh, exhibit on it um this summer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exciting. When is your exhibit? It's uh at the end of July. Okay. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, it's it's pretty nerve wracking. It's my first like solo exhibit. You know, that was part of my intention. Uh, moving down here was like I'd like to try to have like some artwork in a in a gallery whether it's a solo exhibit or even just like a group exhibit like I that was like part of my goal so like try try to get some artwork accepted in a gallery setting yeah uh, so yeah was that the first one that you applied for um well so th this this gallery it's called artworks and um, they had this deal that uh, if a member of the gallery uh, got accepted for three, you know, three group exhibits in one calendar year, they get a free offer to do a solo exhibit. So, oh, okay, yeah, just <clears throat> by luck or by chance or whatever, I was very fortunate to, uh, you know, have a juror that was interested enough to accept my work and in, in any of the, the those in those uh previous uh exhibits and and two of them I was uh also fortunate to receive like an honorable mention which I didn't know that was a thing but like just to, oh nice yeah just to get that little yeah just to get that little nice pat thing. on the back yeah yeah and you know it was a <laughs> night and also because you know i'm just, i'm so broke and i'm like hey got a nice little check i was like i'll take it hell yeah yeah so it was, it was, and now i'm just like huh if i can get first place um, but <laughs> no but yeah it was just it was nice to hit those um i mean uh, maybe i don't know milestones might be a bit uh, dramatic but i mean they kind of were like little little milestones for me to just you know first to have a piece accept uh accepted by a juror and then to get an honorable mention on on you know on two pieces like that was that was nice um so yeah i'm excited for this uh exhibit yeah that's awesome i'll keep an have, eye out for it yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Have have you uh, exhibited your art in in like a setting like that in like a gallery or anything like that? No, not really in a gallery. Um, like the closest thing I've done is like sometimes I'll submit stuff to like the state fair, okay, <laughs> just to their art show and like I'll submit locally. Um, just because 
I like they don't get like a lot of submissions like a lot of it is like the same group of like cute little old ladies that <laughs> get, they like get together every Thursday at the city building and they paint and really I should infiltrate them but <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> no one's got time for that <laughs> no I mean it's you know especially when there's like fees that that follow through like you know with submissions like you know sometimes it can be costly like it can you know like uh, uh like with this with this gallery like there's like a um you know there's like a ten dollar submission fee per piece so like you know you have up to three submissions so it's like man do i want to spend thirty dollars to maybe get in or not right like, yeah so it's it, it, there is like a risk factor in that so yeah, we've got, I'm a member of, um, a, uh, what's it called? Intermountain Society of Artists. Um, I'm a member of that and they put out calls for artwork and they have one out right now, which is just like celebrating women artists. So I think I want to say the pieces are due like in July sometime. So I've been considering it, but my big problem right now is that I don't really have like any originals to submit, which is a good problem to have, mm. admittedly, because they've all sold, but I don't have like anything to submit right now, unless they would like to see a picture of a hot dog wearing a flower crown. Mm. So, <laughs> which I mean, it could be fun to submit that and just to submit it, but. <laughs> It's just so funny, like just that <laughs> a hot dog wearing a crown. That might have to be the title of the episode. I don't know. <laughs> I know, so right? Funny. Or Vienna sausages and a flower crown. <laughs> That's the Let's one. Go gorgeous glizzy. <laughs> <laughs> gorgeous glizzy. <laughs> oh, you give me too many options now. <clears throat> I will <clears throat> have you sold that or that painting the the Vienna sausage one no I haven't I haven't put that one up for sale yet okay because I've been waiting to see if I have I like to release things like in collections right so I'm waiting to see if I have like any more flower crown random what what about prints you sell prints of that yeah, um, I think I have prints of that in my Etsy shop. I'm pretty sure I do. I haven't, surprisingly, you'll be surprised to know I have not sold any prints of that. <laughs> I'm gonna change I have that. sold prints of the Pop-Tart, though, with the flower crown. I'm going to change that for the Vienna. <laughs> There's so, again, because I already told you, you know, oh. I grew up eating Vienna sausage. I'm, when I... <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed, knock on wood, so I don't jinx myself. But if, if I make my sales this weekend, I'm I'm buying a print. Okay. Um, I I mean, if you if it's not obvious already, like I'm I'm very much attached to that piece. So <laughs> I think I love it. Just the idea of that hanging up in your house somewhere it just <clears throat> brings me so much joy. <laughs> again, like. And yeah, I mean, I know because I already foresee it in the future and my wife is going to be like, why do you have a uh, a print of uh, Vienna sausage with the flower crown? And I'd be like, well, hon, as you may remember, I used to eat Vienna sausage as a child. So and I happen to uh, know an artist that, <laughs> that painted this. No. The real question is, why not? Right. <laughs> More, more importantly, yes, yeah. <laughs> Why not have this art piece hanging on the wall? But yeah, I, I have, I, if, if it's not obvious enough, I have a, a strong attachment to it. So I, I will, I will make sure I buy a piece, uh, a print, um, as soon as I have the funds for it. Because I uh, love it. I'll send you a can of Vienna sausages with it. <laughs> Do they they still make those, right? Yeah, Do they still make yeah. them? <laughs> oh hell yeah. And I'll tell you right now, every now and then when we're food shopping and we're we're down that aisle. And, and this happens when I see the, the sausage and corned beef, because I grew up eating corned beef also. <laughs> um and uh, so yeah, anytime I come across those cans, like there's like that little itty bitty voice in my head like 
you want to buy that <laughs> <laughs> you should buy that <laughs> for real because just again like just reconnecting with my childhood like my mom especially like with corned beef my mom would um which i like i know like probably gen the general population is like that shit is gross this i like corned beef <laughs> But I, do you you hate it or you love it? I like it. Oh, okay. Well, so <clears throat> my mom used to cook it. Um, she would chop up, slice up onions, and cook it with onions, and then put whatever like I don't know what seasonings in it. But you pair that with white rice. Oh my goodness! You know, <laughs> the only just the only downside of it is like if you don't like the smell, it's it's gonna stink up the it's gonna stink up the house it's got a strong smell but oh yeah seriously. i don't give a i don't give a <laughs> f my my <laughs> wife can shove it like i i love that shit but um it's been so long since i've had it like i used to cook it, it, it back in college and my roommates be like oh fuck oh you no like a corned beef again because <laughs> i would not cook it like my mom like i can i i could I can never replicate my mom's cooking, but when she it's would, because it's got that little dash of love in it. it yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> um I um actually kind of want to steer this uh our conversation on on a different direction. Uh it's rather typical for my guests, but uh, I'm always intrigued to pick the brain of my fellow artists on on their opinions on this current uh continuing uprise of ai technology <laughs> AI creations. Um, now you can speak generally or you can be specific because as we know it's very nuanced ai is uh you know it's very uh involved with uh visual arts music stand-up comedy film you know uh the medical industry so i'm um, i'm just curious like whatever it is uh whatever knowledge you have of uh ai in this current state like what are your thoughts on it sure um so i will admit i get a kick out of the people on tiktok using ai to make um to change lyrics of songs so oh, like the great. account uh there I ruined it. Have you have you seen their account on TikTok? No, I don't I don't actually um I, I actually I'm not active on, on TikTok anymore. Okay. I haven't been since <laughs> like I used TikTok very early on like like 2018. Like, okay. It, it really picked up. <laughs> um you know, I see videos every now and then because of Instagram or YouTube, but um, no, yes. I'm not aware of this. Uh... Okay, so they'll like take songs and change the lyrics so that they're funny and then run it through the AI so that it sings it back like in the original artist's voice or it sounds like their original voice. Mm -hmm. um, so I get a kick out of those. Those I think are hilarious because I have a really bad habit of changing lyrics myself and then I'll just like stem from it and like keep singing like <laughs> the wrong lyrics um so that stuff is hilarious to me um and I will say that like chat GPT has been interesting to use when it comes to like helping me figure out um certain steps that I need to do to to like meet a goal or to complete a task. <clears throat> like sometimes uh, my brain has a hard time like breaking stuff down into smaller steps. Okay. Um, so it's been interesting to use it for that. Um, but like I've tried, I've experimented with using it for like writing captions and stuff. And I just can't, I cannot. <laughs> like okay. it doesn't, so I love writing personally okay. and um it it completely like takes your voice out of it yes I'm and i hate that so much like you can always kind of tell when someone's using it and so it's like ah uh. um but i will say it has come up with like some hilarious hashtags to um the vienna sausage 
with the flower crowns, like the hashtags that it came up with that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> like I did not use them because you know I don't really want sausage party in my hashtag. Oh my god! For obvious reasons. Yeah, you don't know what but... you're gonna trigger with the. With the yeah. yeah. Yeah, but um, and like with art, um, like sometimes my husband and I will play with it just to see like the ridiculous things that it can make. Like we. <laughs> I don't know. We came one night in bed. I was like, you need to design a shirt that <laughs> says shrimply the best. <laughs> and it's a shrimp playing, playing basketball or, <laughs> or just, you know, doing a <laughs> weird random thing. Oh, that's, that's great. And so like we have run that through and like get a kick out of like a shrimp in a business suit, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I do like the, yeah, like for amusement, I, I, I can get on board with that. <clears throat> um, but I, I agree with you in terms of, um, I guess like just in regards to, uh, captions, like writing captions, you can tell, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'll even say when you know the person is using chat GBT to use for their writings in, in their posts in their content, it's like it's so much more obvious now like mm -hmm. i can't so um i mean not to like call her out but she's she's open about it but um like lena uses a uh chat gbt for her writings and her mm -hmm. content or like her scripts yeah. yeah and um which like you know i'm <clears throat> like if you know i'm not against people doing it but just like to what you're saying like you can it it does take that authenticity out mm -hmm. and um and i guess like from my personal experiences uh you know having uh talking to lena on the podcast and even just privately you know sometimes we would have like we would just like do facetime for like an hour just to you know shoot the shit and whatnot so like having a good idea of like how she expresses herself uh verbally and then like reading her her captions it's so so much more structured like you can just tell like a computer is yeah is coming up with this stuff so it's hard <laughs> for me to like because like i i am a type of reader that will i i tend to read people's writings like in their voice you know it's how i write as well like i yeah i kind of like I don't want to say I expect people to, but I like I, I have like a hope in me that like when people are reading my captions, like they're reading it in my voice. Right. Like, so so yeah, when I'm seeing her posts and then I see these lengthy right like you know yeah writings, and it's not I'm matching like, yeah it's 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 like hard for me to like just read it in her voice but then it just it does feel robotic uh, mm -hmm. and me. she's so lovely too that yeah yeah i agree yeah. Uh, we are we are missing out on not getting her full essence i think yeah i mean you know and again i'm not trying to like disparage anybody that subscribes to using uh chat gbt for their for the for any other writing it's just you know uh, depending on what it is and in the context like some yeah you can you can often tell like when it's authentic or when it's actually being used from from that tool so mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah um yeah i'm very like i used to be kind of fear-mongering with uh with ai just you know uh, the, the fear of our, our you know jobs being taken and all this stuff and of course the skynet theory <laughs> you know <laughs> but uh <clears throat> i do try to look on like the bright side of it or at least the you know the more productive and, and beneficial side of it um i just think it's like it's all it depends on responsibility and the intention on on the use of it Right. Well, and I think we get into a weird situation where we're having it take the place of doing the things that make us as humans a human. Yeah. Like, 
creating art, creating music, creating anything, mm-hmm. writing. Um, when it takes the place of doing that, uh, that part, that just like makes me so sad. I, I don't know. Cause for me personally, like I, like I am an atheist and so I don't believe like in a higher power. So for me, the thing that keeps me going is I'm a human and I'm here and I want to have the human experience to the fullest extent that I can. And so just to like know that like a machine is like doing those things that I feel like make us the most human. Right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's like it's it's just it's strange. It's a, it's definitely a, like a strange phenomenon that we're still experiencing and it's still very much in the early stages and Right. And it's not like it's like <clears throat> taking over the things that we don't want to do. Like <laughs> I, and I, it's I, not making more time for the things we do want to do. Right. I um I just I kind of like I don't want to say I'm worried, but it does it does strike a concern of like uh, like part of my argument is that I feel it can compromise our integrity. You know, yeah. like I understand, you know, the the conveniences, you know, like yeah, like going back to writing, like if you need options like if you need different drafts on how to say something or how to write something like all right i get it you know yeah and i know i know visual artists that will use ai art to help them have variations of an idea Mm -hmm. Um, but again this is just like my personal feeling it's just like i i feel compromised that I can't rely on my pure creativity and my imagination to come up with, you know, different results, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's just like my thing. Like when people just rely it too much to help them get a a step up, that's when it becomes a problem for me, especially people, you know, there have been many cases of artists profiting off of ai art and that's you know that's my line there too is like i don't i don't like that like sure if you want to be amused and like see like what would look like uh you know. <laughs> shrimply the best <laughs> yeah but if you're gonna like if you're gonna make a print of that and then sell it that's like yeah that's the line it's like that that's where i'm not on board with but um so that's why i you know it's you know as vague as it might sound like i just think it's like it's a matter of responsibility and intention behind it uh the use of it so you know in regards to artists uh, of of whatever um craft or, or you know as long as you're not like using ai to sell it as your own then i you know do whatever you gotta do but um just like don't i just don't i just i yeah i guess i am saying i'm worried that artists are gonna just like no longer rely on their own integrity to like be able to come up with these beautiful creations that they Mm -hmm. are down uh capable of you know right you know but um i was gonna ask you um like where speaking of creativity like are where are you like specifically doing something when like you get your ideas or is it random or is it like do you have like a uh, like a ritual that you do um hmm so that sort of depends on I guess it kind of depends on how I'm getting through the early part of my day. Um, Because I've been lately, I've been trying to do, I've been trying to spend time in silence, like not just listening to music or listening to podcasts. Like I just like, if I'm just doing my morning chores, exercising, Mm -hmm. like stuff like that, that I like to do uh, first thing in the morning, like, I try to just do that in silence and then just let my mind do its thing and let it, Yeah, you know, um, cause that's like my, I, I tend to do stuff or, you know, just 
have stuff in the background to distract my mind because like it's always going <laughs> yeah like yeah like i am so easy to like to wait like waking up as soon as i wake up if i wake up before my you know alarm clock i mean i'm up it's so hard mm -hmm. to like shut up like i could like i could be sleeping and then wake up and then you know like a stan bush song from the transformers could be playing in my head <laughs> like i i mean i guess it's like almost borderline adhd or something but like mm -hmm. you can just have random tunes play in my head on repeat or yeah like, random segments from a movie or shit like just random shit could be on repeat in my head as soon as i wake up um so i i try to spend time um quote unquote in silence to let that stuff air out mm -hmm. oftentimes and and uh beautifully th ideas sometimes come come uh to fruition through that process oh nice um, so yeah, it could it it could ideas could be pertaining to, uh, you know, in addition to Tech Utopia, or it could be something that can go through the route of my like eighties nineties nostalgic art, mm -hmm. or or it could be like uh, food. Be like, oh man, I'm, I'm craving this. <laughs> the next time I have this, I'm gonna take a photo so I can paint it, or you know, uh, yeah. Because oftentimes it could be morning, like I, I, like this sometimes happens. Like I'll I'll text my wife, it, it'll be like her first hour of her of her work shift, and I'd be like, um, hey, just a heads up, we might have this for dinner, <laughs> you know. But it's like nine I've been thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. So like, so yeah, I um, so I guess similar to like you, it's kind of like it's just like whatever mood strikes or mm -hmm. idea will strike. Um, yeah. I, it probably doesn't really answer your question. No, it does. Um, <laughs> like my ideas, whenever I'm driving, it's like when I'm like conscious, but like not like fully paying attention, it's like all of a sudden an idea is like <laughs> air dropped into my brain. I'm like, oh, yeah. So I'll notate it or like dreams sometimes for me, which mm. which backfires sometimes. Like the other night, um, I'll, and I'll wake up and try and like make a note of it before I do anything else. Otherwise, it's just gone forever. Mm -hmm. um, but the other night, it was. Um, what if they use the lottery to catch time travelers? Oh shit. Um where like the winners of the lottery are like obvious time travelers. <laughs> and I was like, dang, that's a good idea. I like that. <laughs> huh. Um, but then I'll have other ones where I'll like read the note and it's like the portal to um another dimension is through the potty seat and i'm like what <laughs> what is this <laughs> that is um that it's really uh intriguing to hear because um you know again like i mentioned earlier that being a fan of stand-up comedy so much of that what you're describing is very much the process of is very much of like what it's like to be a stand-up comedian like when like certain bits or, or like jokes like a lot uh, when they describe like how material comes to them is is it, it's like almost exactly like what you described it comes That's to them interesting in their sleep <laughs> or like you know just, just going through their day you know yeah experiencing life i mean there there's a, a an episode of uh, seinfeld when he like he wakes up from a dream and he like it, it, he thinks it's like a good idea for a joke and he writes it down and then throughout <laughs> the episode he's like asking you know he's asking elaine and george like what do you, it's like read this like what do you what do you make of this and they're just they're trying to like you know figure out what like he's trying to you know what he's trying to get at with this note you know like what how this how can this turn into a joke you know why did he think this was funny when he woke up like so like <laughs> and i think um 
I don't know, like not to sound corny, but I think that's just like that's the beauty of like being an artist or, you know, just mm. a creative person in general, I guess. It's just like how these ideas come to us, uh, mm -hmm. whether naturally or just being inspired by just life itself, just because you saw a car drove by and then it just made like, you know, it struck an idea or it made you remember some odd moment some nuanced moment in life <laughs> like right. you know like as opposed to relying on ai to data scrap data scrape mm -hmm. or scrap, whatever the term is like you're you're relying on your 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 intellect your mind to do right. that and i yes. think that's and i i um i actually did a video on this about you know this ai phenomenon it, it, it's like a i called it a pendulum you know because when the thing swings hard this way it's going to swing back and i really I, I really um believe that this is like just another pendulum swing like because we're so um fascinated by how quick we can have these results you know especially mm. with ai art and and like even seeing what they can what they could potentially do for film like having that like really fast turnaround Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna get you know we're gonna kind of get bored of it like it's gonna just be like another right you know, it's just gonna be like another thing we scroll <laughs> through on our social media right. <laughs> is gonna get shorter so i think we will start like you know we'll, we'll kind of start appreciating um you know going back to like oh man like i loved like what this um see this uh art piece i loved what the artist had to go through like you start appreciating again the the, the story and like the hardship right. what came to fruition uh as opposed to like i just typed in a few words and, then, <laughs> and there it was yeah, yeah like, or, <laughs> so I think like we, analog like, stuff yeah yeah like i think we'll you know eventually people will kind of get like we'll we'll get over that and then start going towards to like actual like like manual labor kind of things like you know um you know like i've been fascinated with like how like uh the movie like the film is industry is going because um you know hey, there's a lot of like bs going on with hollywood and stuff and um you know because of like how bad like ratings are going especially with like um streaming services like with like new shows and stuff like a, um, a lot of, how a lot of new shows aren't doing as well and that there's actually there's there's data out there um showing that um viewers are going back to like old shows as mm -hmm. opposed to venturing out to new ones or even just con or continuing new ones because like you know they think it's trash they'd rather watch friends again or you know, and I, I'm, I'm part of that, 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 uh, audience because, like, you know, we watch Seinfeld nonstop. Uh, King of Queens, Everybody Loves Raymond, like those are our shows that we like cycle through over and mm -hmm. over. And um, you know, now like there's actually data showing that people are doing that with other shows. Like they're just going back to older stuff that they enjoyed because the new stuff that is coming out is just like it's not hitting the spot for us right and do you just, think that sorry do you think that it's a function of there's so much content that you're like I'm not spending 45 minutes to sift through something on Netflix or do you think it's a function of like we're nostalgic for like a better time or is it something where um, like for me personally, I appreciate shows where the writers assume that I am smart and don't like spell everything out for me. <laughs> like I cannot. Yeah, I um, like, for example, I feel like Breaking Bad did a really good job of like assuming that the viewers were like along for the ride and they didn't have to like spell everything out. Um, so I'm curious to know, like, what you think is contributing to that? I think, um, I mean, this might be a cop out of a, uh, answer, but I think, I think it's all of that. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, because like, 
Yeah, like I mean, yeah, with this overflow of content, it, we're we're so we're spread thin. Like our again, like that's why we oftentimes people complain about attention spans because we're just like, what's the mm -hmm. next thing? There's so much to see. Whereas, like, you know, for for some people, including myself, it's like I'd rather just go back to what was like I knew what was good. You know, yeah. yes, it it it. it you know, it brings back good memories of a simpler time. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, it, and I, I will, I've talked about this before, like, you know, like, that's why I love, you know, like the old cartoons, um, not only because, you know, this was part of my childhood and, you know, it was a simpler time, simpler days, but there were, um, there were um, moral values that were, <laughs> you know, like that were, you know, in, in a corny way, like GI Joes, like there were like those messages at the end of the episode and be like, <laughs> yeah. remember kids not to, you know, like, yeah, like they're corny, but like there were so, uh, there were so virtual, you know, like there was no, you know, like I'm not that I want to like, you know, going on, on the political route or like, you know, w with like, you know, woke society and this, you know, like all that stuff. Like, it's just like these values, they, they applied to like anything and everything. Like it was just, mm -hmm. you know, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, from, you know, some of these cartoons, that's why, you know, I always believed in holding a door for a woman, you know, before, entering. Like, <laughs> you know, just like these old traditional values, like, you know, they, they, they taught a lot of that stuff. And, um, so that's why I'm like always going back to, to that theme, but, um, yeah, I just think it's a, it's a culmination of like everything, everything that's happening right now, everything, all, what's that movie title? It's like everything, 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 like, everywhere, all at once. Or yeah. I guess, <laughs> but like, I, I really do think it's a, it's a factor of all of those things. Like there's just so much that, the mind gets tired and it's like, all right, let me, let's, I'm going to go to my comfort zone and uh, yeah. <laughs> go back to like what I can fall asleep to, you know, what it is, you know, cause it's just, it's a, well, cause it's a hectic world. Right. So, you know, content comes to you so easily. Mm -hmm. well, like You want to have a good day, but then your day is shit because like you were exposed to all of this terrible stuff that <laughs> you didn't want on in your algorithm. And it wasn't like, under your control. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I, you know, and I, I think that like that, I mean, that's certainly a big factor in my day to day. Like, you know, I try to be very intentional, intentional about how the, the, the ebb and flow of my day is like, right. I want to have a good productive day, a good, stable mindset i just got to be mindful of like being aware of, uh, being avoidant of like just bs like just trash right. content like i don't want drama so i'm gonna make sure i don't watch 10 seconds of any drama otherwise <laughs> my algorithm is gonna give me nothing but drama exactly. <laughs> Like, and that's and that's the scary part right that's something like we really have to be aware of is like it's only a matter of seconds it's only a matter of like a couple of pressions that you make on video or any content in general it's like if you tap if you watch something for so long like <laughs> it's <laughs> like it, it kind of, it sucks but it like you know and that that's just like the reality of it so i i think that's why we're kind of like yeah. in a cycle of things yeah that makes sense yeah. well i think everyone's just tired like you, at the end of the day you know sometimes you just don't want to think about things right if you want to zone out your, and, yeah if you yeah. want to shut your brain off let me put on some like whatever whatever your comfort thing is right like mm -hmm. so like you know like for a while for my wife it was like watching freaking like house real housewives she, <laughs> she enjoyed watching the drum like the bs drama of these housewives <laughs> after a long day at work and i understand that but i'm just like god like this is affecting me <laughs> like, like <laughs> you come out in a fur coat the next day <laughs> or just like you know just like 
me complaining about i don't know just like whatever they can complain about like i find myself complaining about them complaining i'm like i don't want i don't want that that to be the cycle of things like i just know please <laughs> I know, right? Like, we only have, like, so our kids go to bed at, like, nine o'clock. So my husband and I only have, like, an hour of time to, like, sit and watch a show and be together. And so we're, like, very particular about what we choose because, like, time is, like, our greatest resource <laughs> or our most limited resource, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, so I think maybe that has something to do with why people are choosing stuff that they know that they like as far as like content goes. Yeah. Do you, uh, <laughs> is there any concern, uh, like, you know, I guess like going back to sort of, um, like the influence of AI or like, even like, I don't know, exposure to, to your, to your children. Is there like a, like a concern or, or anything like that of, of the future? Not necessarily like a concern. Um, like I try not to get too ahead of myself with mm. that because then my anxiety just skyrockets. <laughs> right, right. Um, but, you know, uh, the best thing that I can do is just do my best to teach them to be media literate and to mm. know like when something is trying to influence them. Okay. Um just kind of and being choosy about the kind of things that they watch like there's sometimes that my son goes down like the weirdest rabbit holes on his little youtube videos <laughs> like we've got like the um we've got the like parental controls on but there's still some stuff that we're like, oh, what yeah. are you watching like i'll walk away for like five minutes because i like to try and be present so I can keep an eye on what they're consuming. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you go go get a drink and come back and it's like, what is this? Yeah. It's so, so tough. It's so tough. Like power to you guys, you know, the parents to have to like deal with this. And like at this time being a parent, it's like, and, and like, that's the thing. Like my wife and I have established like, yeah, we're not, we're not going to have kids. Like we just, for all the reasons honestly yeah no i get you know? it <laughs> um and um and all you know like i've had my fair share of being a, a nanny or a, a manny as, <laughs> as I like to say like i've had my fair share and i i have nephews that i've babysat um so just having witnessed and experienced the stuff i i've got to um you know experience i'm like yeah like it's just i I just don't have it in me and I'm I'm relieved to know that my wife and I I mean we've been on the same page in that regard like we've been like but like every now and then I just like make sure she doesn't regret not trying cuz <laughs> I the last thing I would want is her to like have that resentment of me like not wanting to try but mm -hmm. it's been it's been clear for a few years now we're like yeah we <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're good. We like being aunts and uncles and, you know, godmothers, godfathers. Yeah, for sure. But I know. It's, yeah. The power like... to you guys that have to, like, <laughs> monitor this stuff. Like, like my, my, my in-laws here uh, in Richmond, um, they have, like, a no screen policy right now. Uh, their, their daughter's only two, two years old, I think, right? Two or three right now. Um. So like we they they have like a no screen policy like when we're around when mm -hmm. we're around there, like we we try to be mindful and make sure you know we don't have our phones out or at least someone right. on our phones around her like like we try not to be on our phones around her as as much as possible um and like yeah like they don't have they won't have the TV on until they put her in bed mm -hmm. but um it's just it's just funny to witness because like you know like the the uh my my on my birthday my um my brother-in-law wanted to do something nice he was very he's very thoughtful to you know he's like yeah come over for dinner and i was like well it, like my wife and i were big ufc fans so like every saturday or mo most saturdays it's it's fight night mm -hmm. so like you know it's part of our ritual every weekend and there was a fight that that on my birthday 
And I'm like, well, you know, we're just going to like hang out and watch UFC. And he's like, no, come over, watch UFC over at our, at our house. We'll have dinner, you know, we'll make something. And I'm just like, this is going to be, this is going to be like, a sh not a shit show, but I'm like, dude, you're going to be like on high alert because, you know, now we, we're having, trying to have a nice dinner, but we're watching fights and you don't want your daughter not only, <laughs> the screen. <laughs> not only being exposed to a screen, but now she's watching fights. Nonetheless, that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, why would you put yourself through that, that much responsibility? But, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm, I am very curious to see how they're going to uh, assess the situation when she's old enough to understand like oh these things are right <laughs> yeah i know my son's in third grade and already he's like when can i get a phone and i'm like oh, <laughs> never <goodness. Yeah. laughs> like he's got <laughs> friends that have phones and stuff and i'm just like and there is no opinion. need the, in, the influence from others it's like because mm -hmm. like um yeah my my wife's uncle like he you know like they'll talk to us about like you know they're their kids are like, I don't know, 12, like they're, they're early teens. Uh, well, at least one of them is, but like they, same thing. They're like, Oh, they're asking for a new phone or like, you know, they have like that setting where they can monitor like their screen activity, like on their mm -hmm. phone. Right. Um, but it's just like, they're like, yeah, man, like we don't know how to like you know limit that <laughs> it's just right so I heard um I was listening to a podcast I think it's called good inside I think is the one um and she was talking about um parents need to monitor their children outside less and on the internet more and I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Because, you know, kids need more unstructured playtime outside, being with their peers, not having, like, helicopter parents, which I am guilty of. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, parents aren't paying enough attention to, like, what their kids are doing online. And it's hard because it's it really is, like, a full-time job just to, like, make sure your kid's, like, not getting weird things on the internet yeah and and that's the thing right there are those like parental settings but it's like so there's stuff that comes yeah stuff that comes through and then, and then me being such a skeptic i'm like man do they just like make these things just for like a comfort like just to be like don't worry but like it's like no nah, <laughs> shit's still gonna go down like we just want you to <laughs> we just want you to feel comfortable but you're, you're I know, right? No exposure. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. like it's it's unfortunate. Like that's just like how things are being run right now, and just like there's there hasn't seemed to be like a a solution to that yet. So right, no. uh, yeah, and I feel like that's probably going to continue to get worse with AI, <laughs> which is unfortunate. <laughs> like I'm sure you're familiar with like dead internet theory, where like. No. it's just everything is just like bots creating the content bots commenting on the content bots uh, pushing the content <laughs> where it's like humans are like not even part of the equation anymore right. <laughs> like i've noticed it with blogs and stuff oh, like wow. a lot of it's just like regurgitated garbage and then you'll like go click to another blog and it's like the same regurgitated garbage <laughs> wow that's <laughs> that's very interesting because like i i've kind of i've been having that sort of skepticism like in regards to like social media comments and stuff mm -hmm. like obviously yeah. i think a, a lot of us are aware of like you know bots on social media but i mean i just feel like yeah they they seem to be quite active in, in terms of like interacting with other like with organic users Yes. Um, I've noticed it like really bad on Facebook. Like, oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like the, um, a lot of pages on there are just like weird, like, uh, what would you call it? Like content farms, um, mm, that just like that. push out like all this weird stuff and all they need is like 50 bots that push it out to their 50 bots. And then it just like <laughs> escalates. Yeah. 
So it's, I know it's interesting. I, I miss like the early 2000s, mid 2000s internet, like yeah. being on AIM and. <laughs> oh my God. I, I actually had this question be, uh, before in my head and, um, you know, I, I was grown. I was, I was brought up to never ask uh, a, a, a woman's age, but I'll, I'll ask, uh, are you, uh, you know, are you, uh, uh, uh an 80s 90s kid or early 2000s <laughs> uh okay so i was born in 87 <laughs> oh okay we're, we're about the same age then okay okay and i had this conversation with my husband last night because my one of my kids asked me something about like how something about my age and i was like yeah 34 and then my son who's like my numbers whiz he's like no you're 36 and i was like what <laughs> Like I lost a year or you know, I lost two years in there. Like yeah. what? Like I just don't count anymore. Like it's I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I'm 37. I turned 37 in um, November. But like okay. I actually have a video that was taken that was filmed uh, that summer, and I was claiming I was 37 then. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Yeah, I, so it it yeah. After like, I don't know. I feel like I I lost count like after thirty to be honest. Right. Like there <laughs> there have definitely the been same times, after that. Yeah, there were times where I kept referring myself as like thirty one or something. And and my wife is going through <laughs> the same thing. Like you're 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 my wife's age, and she's like she has to she has to reflect on my on my age to know what, <laughs> to like do the math. Um, yeah. It's about. We're just about um yeah like a year or two apart and she's like wait you're you're 37 okay and it's just like <laughs> like you know but uh, um, yeah but you know what's funny like i always remember my husband's age suspiciously enough hmm. <laughs> but never could remember mine yeah, a little odd <laughs> the mind the know. mind works in mysterious ways so that's why we gotta <laughs> You know, keep, keep the mind alive. You know, Jeez, <laughs> so crazy. Well, Rhiannon, um, I I just want to say because you know, for your for your first time podcasting, you've done very well for two and a half hours. And, I know uh, we're like on a marathon here. <laughs> well, you know this this is typically how it goes. Um, and people are often like surprised by that but i always say like you know when when a conversation is going well enough like you lose track of time it, it certainly flies and um yeah it's like people would be like oh how much how much does a podcast tip you know typically go and i'm like you know 90 minutes sometimes two hours they're like oh wow really and i'm like yeah but like you know when when the, the conversation feels so natural and you're just conversing like time is like irrelevant you know right <laughs> but um, yeah yeah so i i want to say thank you for for making this time especially you know you got your your kids are you know they're they're in school and you have the free time for yourself but you're you're <laughs> you know you're you're spending it with me which i really appreciate um, well thank you i appreciate that and i've had a lot of fun it's always interesting to talk to other artists and just you know go off on all these different tangents <laughs> yeah i mean it's been my pleasure and um so i i always uh like to end the every podcast with this segment where i, I share some inspirational and and um, you know meaningful quotes uh you know from other artists or philosophers or you know wh whomever i find inspiration from really and um there was one that i found for some reason, I thought this one would resonate, so I'm, I'll I'll let you decide. Um, okay. <laughs> this is actually um, this is a recurring person that I always take quotes from, just because. Uh, um, are, are you familiar with Stephen Pressfield? No. So he wrote this great series of books, um, for artists like ourselves, um, and in, in the first uh, of this trilogy series, it's called The War of Art. 
And it, it, oh, okay. it it's a great book. I, I recommend it to, to all artists, especially those that are like struggling to get out of like this, um, you know, to get out of like the, um, you know, to get out of like creative blocks or, or whatever forms of resistance they may be facing to just to, to create their work. So I always recommend the war of art um, for that reason. Um, and the quote that I chose um, says, we fear discovering that we are more than we think we are more than our parents, children, teachers think we are. We fear that we actually possess the talent that our that our still small voice tells us that we actually have the guts, the perseverance, the capacity. We fear that we truly can steer our ship, plant our flag, reach our promised land. And we fear this because if it's true, then we become estranged from all of we all we know and we pass through uh, a membrane. And we become monsters and monstrous. Okay, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think this kind of, um, you know, I think uh, in, a, in a sense, like this kind of talks about, yeah, when we, yeah, when we gone from what we're, you know, be com being comfortable. Oh, uh, wait, how's it go? Uh, being comfortable with discomfort, you know, like mm -hmm. you know, once we get out of that comfort zone and and uh, become aware of what we're actually capable of, that's like, oh, shit, you know, <laughs> kind of like, I, yeah, I think it goes, it, it's kind of a nice circle back to um, what I said in the beginning about having everything you need inside of you. I like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah well again thank you so much Rhiannon and um I would like to also thank um for for the audience that that is that joined us on our on this wonderful conversation um I would also like to advise them to uh check your Instagram out which is uh I had your handle in front of me mm. <laughs> Oh no. Um I'm sorry. What it okay. All pressure's on. Ran, ran, in da, <laughs> ran in underscore DOS underscore art. Yes. Um and you also have an Etsy account. I do. Under the same uh, sort of handle. Um links, of course, will be provided in the description. But uh yeah, be sure to check out her artwork and to uh yeah, join her on her journey. Um, I look forward to, you know, more of your work, especially, um, you know, I, I believe you said that you're, you know, you're space astronauts, like that's a continued, that's a continuing thing. So I look forward to seeing more of that. Um, yeah. Uh, any last words for the audience? Um, I don't think so. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> that was my fun. Pleasure. It was my pleasure. And, um, Yeah. So for everyone, everyone tuning in, please stay safe, stay healthy, and stay driven. And we shall catch you on the next one. Peace out.